Hello everybody! If it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer, and that must mean it's time for another episode of Warhammer Weekly. Joining me, as always, is, I suppose, my own personal bone ripper to my thankful. What's going on, Tom? How you doing? Hello, friends. Does that mean I ride Tom around? I'll let you fill in the <laughs> blanks. Also joining us on the show, AOS List Labs, the man, the myth, the legend, one of my personal heroes and idols, Sam Morgan. What's up, brother? How you doing? Hello. Uh, I would very much like to see you two squeeze into a boat. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> you two in oh. the bringy dingy. Oh, we're going to talk about Mr. Soul Seeker today for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that dude. Everybody's favorite new friend, that guy. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to be talking about this right here. We're going to be talking about Skaven today, getting into it. Is it the most Johnny-ish book they've ever released? I mean, it's up there. Uh, we'll get in it. We'll get amongst it. We're going to talk about it. What it's like. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it book one? All of these questions will not be answered, but we'll, we'll chew around the edges of some of them. But first, of course, the news. Maybe if I hold still, mm -hmm. people will think that I froze. And then you'll forget, you'll, you'll, you'll have an excuse as to why, even though we're doing this and I warned you a half hour before and you were sitting here for 10 minutes, you didn't bring up the news to discuss. That I don't know I what wrote. you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we have a rumor engine. We do. We do. It is a hand holding a skull with claws. Useless. Yeah. I don't know what to do with this. I don't know. I'm kind of excited about it. Okay. Uh, what do you think it is? Uh, Sam, what do you think it is? Oh, I haven't seen it and I can't see it, so I'm going to make a <laughs> wild guess. <laughs> I'm going to make a wild guess that it's Flesh Eater Courts yeah, that's... and uh, that the, their line is receiving one additional, like, small monster-sized hero. That's, that's my guess. There it is. Hmm. Like, realistically, Sam, that is as good as a guess as you made if you were staring at the image, because that's the exact same guess I was going to make. Yeah, so I thought the same thing, but the fingers aren't thin enough. Like, the nails are, like, blunted and stubby a little bit. I mean, we're in my defense, in, in my defense, here. you didn't say that. You didn't say that up front, so I couldn't, I didn't have that information. That is also true. true. That's true. We no, I'm more rebuking here, Vince. Tom. I, I'm rebuking Vince, not uh, sure. you, Sam. Uh, okay. No, you, I, I don't know. Like, the, I'll say this: the teeth are super defined on that skull, like really defined. So I don't know how zoomed in this actually is. Very much so. You can you see from the so? you, yes, like you can, yes, you can see the brush strokes very clearly. I mean, maybe. Yeah, so, so it's some kind of dead thing. Cool, let's talk about real stuff. I, rumor engines like this are just like, whatever. It's okay, it's a thing. Next. So, the, um, the, the time frame as well. We, we could be getting this next week, or this could literally be 24 months away. You don't know with these things anymore, so. Exactly, they're so far out. Yeah, all right. Next thing, painting uh, stuff. Let's talk about so paints. So, like, paint, paint is supposed to be a big deal, like new contrasts that are just, you know, just more of the normal stuff. Just Tom, have you things. heard about Slap Chop? It's it's all the rage these days. Uh yeah, actually uh, I I'm 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 painting a commission using Slap Chop right now. See, there you go. No, I mean yeah, the the new paints <laughs> come out this this uh weekend. Uh I'll have the first yep. of two videos about them come out this Saturday. Uh yeah, I'm excited for them. That's cool. They're going to do the paint stuff and then they're doing like a paintathon on July 17th where they're going to just hang out and hobby all day and answer people's questions and stuff like that on their Twitch channel. So Vince, cool stuff. do you remember when we used to do like paintathons, like yeah, all sure. day just painting episodes? Hobby episodes? Yeah. Back back before I had to like edit videos and which takes hours and hours. Yes. I do remember that. <laughs> do you remember the days of us just like sitting around talking for like 6 hours at a time mm -hmm. and people watching that for some reason? I, I do. Good times, but here we are. Now now we edit instead and, and write things, and I have to prepare. I have to spend 10 hours making PowerPoint presentations. It's great. The life I've chosen for myself, yes. I agree. <laughs> I've made all the best decisions. We need to paint some more sometime. Sure. Okay. Uh, new paints, obviously, with a paint-a-thon. We have those paints on pre-order. I'm kind of looking forward to them. We'll see. I really like the neon colors, like very bright colors, and I like the blues, like the whitish blues, like the ice blue and then the 
like the white with just a touch of blue. Those interest me. Yeah, the the one of them is real strong. The other two were part of the weak contrast range you yeah. were talking about, where they're yep. very soft. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So I'm interested. We'll see. All right. We'll see. Um, I picked up the uh, Army Painter Speed Paints recently, and oh. I thought that, that some of those, some of that, some of those were comparable with GW. Some of them were marginally better. So it's it's really nice to have a competitive industry thing going on there, where they both need to consistently up their game. I, I like a bit of healthy competition, and um, I'm I'm keen to try out the Croxigore, the turquoise one, um, yeah. because that's that's a color that I that I use often, usually like to to desaturate, but not to contrast. But yeah, it's a it's a nice that's a nice color, I think. Yeah, it's it is a very good color. Um, there's there's a couple in this line. I, I'm I am actually super excited about this line because it's got like seven single pigment colors in it. They're really bright and intense. That's what I generally like. It's super kick you in the face colors. Um, Stuart, what's up, Stuart? I see him in the chat. He said, "I'm just glad they didn't release another seven browns." That's true. But the two browns they did release, which is which is Garagak Sewer and Rattling Grime, are both actually awesome. Like they're really good browns. So uh, you know, it's, you get two really good ones. So there you go. All right. Uh, but I feel like we've buried the lead, Tom, because as soon as those books are out now, what happens? But the next week, and sure enough. You know, it feels like it feels like I'm like in Magic World. So yeah, Magic yeah, sure. Gathering has has gotten like this terrible, terrible like rotation going where literally like a set will release and then two days later they begin previewing the next set. Um so yeah. much so that like it's it like it's created this terrible market grind situation and like Markets on all the sealed stuff is crashing, and it's like a post-apocalyptic over there on in Wizards World right now. And now in GW, it seems like they're like, "Let's do it again," you know, yeah, where sure. where uh, they uh, the grind is real, and so we have a new another dual box, folks. That's right. This is our third in three months. I mean, get used to it. This is the world from now on. This this is our life now. Um, this one is Zinch vs. LRL. We knew this was coming uh, because of the GHB book. We knew that there was a new hero, and if there's a new single LRL hero, that definitely means, definitely means that it's uh, a dual box. Mm -hmm. Zinch was the low-hanging fruit there. There was a bunch of Zinch adjustments that we saw that was highlighted in our GHB video last week. Um, and we suggested that that's probably what we're looking at. And lo and behold, we did. They updated the um, the Cursling model, the old uh, fine cast with up a new plastic. And so, I mean, it all looks great. I love, love, love the uh, the new LRL model. Like, I love the the helmless. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at her here. The Enlightener. Yeah, yeah Sam, the Enlightener. What, so first of all, Sam. How do you feel about the fact they made us wait this long for another LRL book? I feel like this was at least three, six months delayed. We should have had it sooner. That's number one. Number it's two, it really is. It is frustrating. Number two, how much do you think Zinch will cheat in this in their upcoming book? Like, what's the cheating percentage? Is it going to be at the same level it was? Higher? Where are we going to be on the cheating scale? They don't have a good track record. No. Uh, Th this your is thoughts? Yeah, massive crossroads. Massive crossroads. They've taken probably two of the the most offensive books in terms of how convoluted they are, mm -hmm. uh, and in terms of how frustrating they are to play against, and uh, you know the the mental overhead to play those armies. Um, it's it's literally the worst playing against a new Zench player. They're they're sort of thumbing through their book and you're like you've got a hundred things you got to do this hero phase. If you're opening the book, I'm in trouble here. Um, so I really, I really deeply hope that they, they fix bo both those books yeah. in terms of streamlining them, uh, and also in terms of the, the way that they play. So having a kill box for Zench isn't particularly fun. You're within 18 inch of my army you've lost. Uh, and then Lumineth, you're never getting to my army you've lost. Neither of those play styles I find particularly engaging. Uh, and I'll probably say that they're my two least favorite armies in, in the whole game. So... I'm, I've got my fingers massively crossed, but I don't, I don't know. I think it feels like they're just doing little, little tweaks. They're working at the margins and the edges ra rather than at the core for some of these, these older books that are being revitalized. So I'm, I'm a little bit apprehensive. Yeah, I mean, really, step one for basically both of these books is throw them in the, into the sea and start over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yep. 
strip these things to the stud and write new rules. That's it. Well, okay. it's interesting because the uh, the Shining Company um, moved to the War Scroll. I don't know if you guys saw that. Mm. It moved to the, the rule for Shining Company, moved to the War Scroll, and got simplified already. And they pulled out... It's just keeping models within, like, base-to-base, base, basically, of two other models. And they completely got rid of... Uh, the restrictions on um, charging and um, and piling in and all that stuff. Sure. The question will be: Do they do they actually cut all the necessary stuff? Like, do Lumineth actually need five layers of special rules? Probably not. Um, probably you could just make them like good, and that would be fine. That would just be fine if you just had gave them like some good some good stats, and and one layer of rules, and then we mm -hmm. called it a day. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that would probably be okay and a better play experience uh yes i am all about book dampening throw them in the sea that's correct <laughs> um i completely agree with you sam on your take this is like the two worst armies as far as complexity confusion overcooked overwrought over top down concepted books being thrown out at the same time which mm, <laughs> scares me <laughs> i mean i'll just say i'm looking forward to it like this is a dual box i am buying friends yeah uh, it's i mean it's good box as far as i do want to paint this girl i agree with you the, the fig is amazing um as well as a new cursling i have a big zinch army and I, i'm i'm interested i'd love to have actually find zinch compelling to play ag again which it's not right now. So there you go. Um, I really like the redesigned Cursling. I've seen some people say they don't like it. Sam, what do you think of the uh, redesigned Cursling? I think it's sensational. Uh, I'm a massive fan. Uh, the the old one, I have no idea how it migrated to, to AOS because I think he was a special character. Um, yeah, it was back, Village. Back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and this one, yeah, obviously it's, it's a more modern take. I, I like it. Um, they, they really struggle with these hybrids between Magic Caster and, and Fighter, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, like, I'm thinking the the twins over in oh, the Slanesh where they're riding the demon around, yeah, yeah, one of those yeah. guys called. Um, that, that sort of Celeste. stuff doesn't let, usually land. Yeah, and there's one in Lumineth as well, so um, we'll, we'll wait and see how this one how this one pans out yeah. in terms of the War Scroll. The problem with yeah. El 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 Elaria and El Elakbion or whatever their names are, the twins, yeah. the LRL <laughs> twins, and with Silesk, is that they're just riding on each other, basically, right? They don't. Well, they don't get the full jumping, integration. The twins are jumping yeah. over each other. <laughs> they're basically riding on each other on the model, Tom. I understand what they're trying to portray, but nah, one's riding on the other. <laughs> they're basically playing chicken in a pool. That's like that's what's going on there. Um, but yeah, I think this new Cursling model is just amazing. I am stoked about this. I really, really like this model. So, yeah, great stuff. Um. Oh, so I'll pick up both the heroes. I have no intention of picking it like just the one just to paint because I think it'd be a fun paint project and the other for my Zinch army. Uh, what I'm hoping is that like Zinch becomes interesting to play exactly what you said beyond the kill box and that they have roles and something for the demons to do. Well, you can the send me your your Zangor stuff, Ben, because mm -hmm. you're clearly not going to use it. No. And um, And then just give Kevin the LRL. Done. Yeah, sure. I'll just keep the two heroes. There you go. Okay, good stuff. Uh, all right. Can can we plan. talk about? Can we briefly talk about how? It, I'm pretty sure that all of the LRL, just as a race, are toddlers. Why so? Because they're always standing on rocks. Yeah. If you've so. ever had young children, young children always look to Love rocks it. to stand on. <laughs> Right, like no, mm -hmm. so. If there's any like high point, they'll always go stand on those things like little meerkats. And all of the LRL heroes, doesn't matter who you are, they're standing on little tiny rocks. Mm -hmm. Well, two things I'll say to that, Tom. You'll you'll see. So I have a new situation out back behind my house. You'll see it in a couple weeks when you come up. But there is a raised rock wall. Okay. Every time and, I take the dogs out, I jump up on the wall and walk around on the wall. Yeah. So Vince, Vince is the toddler here. Got it. I haven't Noted. lost my childhood glee, Tom. Unlike apparently the rest of you who just don't jump up on walls and rocks anymore. Like, I will, of course you jump on rocks. It's fun. It's fun to jump on rocks. I'm with the LRL on this. It's the only thing that apparently I like about them. 
So, yeah, I agree. Thank you. That's what rocks are for, Tom. There you go. All right. Excellent. Let's get into some pick of the week, shall we? Okay. Sam, you have some picks. What would you like to share with everybody? Yeah, I have two. Two um, being particularly parochial, both both from my neighborhood. So I've got Stuart, the Iron Gutsman, uh, and his YouTube channel. Uh, he's done some really interesting analysis of the Nurgle book um, in the, the sort of the, the latter days of the last GHB. And, and then more recently, he's put out a Skaven episode. Uh, which hopefully will complement what we what we discussed today. Um, and I'd, I'd certainly recommend it for anyone looking for for further Skaven viewing. Um, Stuart was one of my teammates over at AOS Worlds, and and he was the the best performing Australian. He he did particularly well. I'd, I'd certainly um, have a good listen and, and take him what he has to say. And and quite often he has views which are maybe contrary to the the broader popular belief. So I really like his stuff. Um, don't agree with all of it, but I like his stuff. And um, the other one I've I've put down is Danny Paints, um, and he started a series. We're playing Lord of the Rings. We're, we're sort of playing Lord of the Rings and Warhammer Six Edition as our mains. Um, so we're, we're pretending it's like two thousand and two or something. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's just all over again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are and, you using uh, Danny... books or are you just using ravening hordes and just calling it a day? No, no. We're using we're using books, and there's community FAQ. Um, which sort of tightens it up. It, it's it, it's a dog's breakfast. Like it is certainly a nostalgia game, not a sure. like a crisp twenty twenty two game. Uh, and yeah, Danny's doing a series at the moment where he's painting up the uh, vanquishers of the necromancer, uh, and he's just done the first one there, Galadriel, which I was able to to take some learnings away in terms of there's a bit with um, you know transparent clothing, so you can see her stomach and you can see the white cloth and uh, mm-hmm. something I've been trying to try to pull off with my amazons that i'm I'm painting so yeah i really enjoyed that one as well very nice is this the amazon like mordheim warband did you get your hands yeah. on that it's a great war <laughs> circa band. 2002 well. again yep a <laughs> yep. couple of years back i found one in a game store new mm-hmm. on bo- new in box sitting on the shelf oh, wow. still at original retail price i was just like oh, i'm gonna be buying that thank you this is like 2017 or something. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh my gosh! Well, wow. oh, it was it was 20. It was earlier than that because we had just we had yeah, we were like, in the Mordheim and we went it back was into recently. Warhammer. Yeah, it was yes. 2015, but still, but still. that's still like 16 years after the fact <laughs> when it mm-hmm. should have been yeah. at retail. Still shrink wrapped. It was great. Well, I I found a Mangles Man Flayers, uh, uh dogs of war oh yeah those dogs of war boxes yep at like still brand new shrink wrap 30 bucks at uh, my oh, hobby wow. town usa <laughs> nice nice yep. all right uh, excellent suggestions and let me just say people who are watching this after you're done here go go click on that link give Stuart's skaven video a watch it's amazing Stuart's an awesome person and plus if we all go if a bunch of people go and sub to him then he'll feel compelled to make more videos which is what i also want so <laughs> there you go tom what's your pick yeah so uh scott uh miniac uh dropped a video this last week on um or actually i guess it was last week on some controversy um some of you had heard that uh he he had done uh some work for the uh, for the horse heresy event and um he had an oopsie where he posted some stuff to his instagram and uh and was smacked pretty hard on the wrist for it um and uh and so he had kind of a tell all like here's what i did here's what happened it's my fault i'm sorry and uh and it stirred up a lot of conversation and so i really appreciated it i thought it was a great um just a a heartfelt engagement with an issue of just you know truth telling right yeah. of like this is what i did this is what happened and uh and i messed up and we don't always get that especially from content providers and so um i would in, in encourage you all to check it out uh, and uh, as a bonus, you get to see Vince dance in that video. That is a true statement. Yeah, somebody's already gifted that. I know that gift now exists and is out there. I, I, I it was already sent to me. Indeed, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. The direction I got was dance in the stupidest way you can imagine. I was, okay, got it. Handle it. I'm on it. So you look like a marionette. Check. Yeah. Well, hey, look, I 
I respond to direction, okay? Like I'm I'm not the I'm just the actor. All right. So I I've got to respond to the director's vision. Uh so uh my pick of the week will be for our good buddy Haywo uh who uh, did a nice review of Battle Scroll Gallet Galay Gillette the best an AOS player can get and uh, walk through it and it's a good good review and what's fun about it is to have him read each rule and go oh I I like that that's okay because he was reacting to it cold like he hadn't pre-read it before he went in and so it was great to have him read things and be like oh yes this is actually a good fix this is actually a good change and you know like thank you again I'll say it again thanks for actually doing the thing we asked you to do which is change the rules that are bad that's all we want it's not it's not hard just just fix the things that are broken. I don't know why this is ever a conversation. Yeah. So and and they did, and it'll be interesting to see how things shake out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, excellent, gentlemen. Hobby time. Sam, what's been on your desk? Have you been working on that uh, that middle hammer? Yeah, I do. I do have an affinity for the the middle hammer. So anything two thousand two thousand and seven is sort of my my wheelhouse. So I've got a uh, hundred and twenty. Corsairs, Dark Elf Corsairs from the sixth edition release that I'm I'm cleaning up at the moment. There, they're all the white metal. So I I picked up a um a mini Dremel and um I'm just pinning everything and and some of the mold lines are just like wild. Like I don't know who put <laughs> these in the in the cast, but they're not they're not great. So yeah, I'm working through all of that uh, with a view to getting it ready. Um, I'm doing a like a three video series where I'm going to do um, paint an army in a weekend. So Danny and I are both going to do that and have complimentary videos. Then I'm going to do an episode with Darren Watson, um, getting the most out of the Dreadlord on Black Dragon because we both. Yeah. We both see him as a as a challenge, trying to get that unit in and then do something cool with it, uh, and then and then finally the series will wrap up with me doing a vlog at the the Hobart Grand Tournament where I'm going to take my Scourge Privateers, uh, and my my nominal aim is to go four and one with a, a predominantly Scourge Privateers army. So that's the, that's like a little that's like a little ninety day snapshot of what's going to be happening in my life, um, <laughs> and and I think yeah I'm I'm super excited about it. I um. I was fortunate enough to spend some time with Simon who did your Slaves to Darkness review recently and yep. he talked me through the splintered fang stuff um in yeah. some detail and I was yeah. he had a captive audience I was like give me more give me more and yeah, I've been amazing, I've right? been thinking about alternate versions of that so mm-hmm. I can get the um I can get the Corsairs up to six attacks each, rend five, damage two. Um, and that that's cool cuz the unit of 10 can go in and pop stuff then. Um obviously. <laughs> And there's yeah, there's some really nice interactions there. Cities, cities is a really cool puzzle to try and unpack, try and solve. I agree. I, yeah, absolutely. It's, I it's tried to get Vince. Interesting. Yeah. I right. tried to get Vince to let me run uh, uh, Drake Spawn and uh, yep. and course and uh, in Scourge Privateers for Havoc. Like mm-hmm. I was like, come on, I'm gonna do a bunch of knights and we'll do the dragon as a general. Yeah. It'll be yep. great, and then I'll have some Scourge. And he's like, stop it. And I'm like, and was, my response was that sounds terrible. <laughs> the the Drake spawn are 120 now, so every GHB yeah, no. they have a, a nominal reduction in points. So it's 10 wounds, three plus oh, save. Three, up. three plus save. That's the thing. Like in in Tempest Eye in particular, you just have them in line, screen forward. But there's just one attack. The one attack is really problematic uh, for the for the lancers. Yes, but it's three attacks a model, and if they yep. are bounty hunters, that's two mm-hmm. damage on conquering mm-hmm. units. Mm-hmm. But he's that's not, pretty good. Yeah, no, yeah, you're preaching to the choir here, mate. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty already good. converted. Pretty we got to get Vince on board. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I love no. it every time. It's but in bounty hunters, that's the new thing. Yeah. That's the new yeah, go to now. It, that, that's time. the new. Yeah, that's the new cogs. Yeah. Um, now instead, he's going to make me play my spiders. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> That I'm for. I support this. Glit, Git's got a massive glow up. Anyway, yeah. they they look they're yeah. looking great. So, yeah. Uh, Tom, what do you? Be, I know what you're working. I know what you're working on, but you can tell everybody else what you're working on. Yeah. Um. I well, I already did kind of. Um. I I'm I'm working on a, a fairly large Sylvaneth commission. Um. Which is literally like Sylvaneth. Like if there was ever an army, ever an army, that was made to shine with slap chop yeah it's oh, sure enough. yeah sure sure because the wildwood contrast is a wonderful brown for wood 
And when you get a bunch of layers in there with like, you know, uh, with dry brush stuff with whites all the way down to like, and the, like just the whole range, it looks great. It looks great with contrast on it. And so um, I am, uh, I am working through the first thousand and some points, 2000 points of his army. So it's okay. uh it's it'll be a pretty big uh pretty big commission. So I'm doing a bunch of archers right now and some a war song revenant and a bunch of stuff. Just all the things. Very nice. Uh I will and I want to answer Andrew here who said, What is chaff in AOS? So chaff is like um any cheap unit that you put out there to screen so that your opponent can't choose the combats they want. They can't kill your things that they want to come kill in melee specifically. Um, in the current iteration of the game, in 3.0, your best sort of chaff is probably, like, fast uh, five-model light cavalry units that have sort of the best coherency, especially if they're not battle line, then that's an even better world because then they don't end up being Galatian veterans and it's much harder to remove well, them. But they're if they're mounted, good. yeah, like if they're mounted, they can't be Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, sorry, GV anyways. They're, they're yeah. GV automatically just well. So, yes, right. that's why they're so good because then they're not GV. They're not Galatian veterans. Um, so anyways, uh, the general idea of them is to just get in the way. Yes. And, and help you control the pace and take a hit. Like he is for them to take a hit and whether they survive or not, most of the time they're going to die unless they're Drake spawn, which are on three up space, two ups and Tempest die. Um, and on that first turn, uh, and then they get out of the way. So if they survive, they retreat out and then you basically get to come in with whatever unit you want to fight with and uh and clean up yes there are many many units that fit this description all right some armies just don't have any though that is a worth thing worth saying okay yep. cool my hobby time have, i'm the only one who's show appropriate here i guess uh my hobby time i've been repainting some old school these are very heavy and metal and i don't want to drop them but some old school gutter runner slash whatever whatever assassin dudes i don't know I have a bunch of the metal ones from the 90s. And so I'm trying out some different color schemes. There's a little stabby guy right there with a little net. And then this one's almost done. He's still in process. He needs his poison. But yeah, there you go. They're their little weeping blades. Um, so we're doing a little little purple, seeing how I like that. Uh, but yeah, I've been working. It's all it's Skaven here. It's Skaven time. Uh, I actually sent a request out to our friend you're doing the commission for because I found some 3D prints of some some Skaven Gutter models runners. that I want. Yep. It, just general stuff. Yeah. So I sent a request over. You know, here's the thing. Both in searching for art for this show and in searching through 3D prints of Skaven, okay, there is a lot of people making a lot of Skaven or rat women that are uh very 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 uh humanized in their femininity let me just say that okay well i mean rats like, i just created... googled like skaven art and it was just half of my results were that <laughs> and look no shame i'm not throwing shame on your kink you like what you like I just say I like it is not it's not a question of me judging. You go nuts. My question was I had no idea it was this popular. Like that was I mean it was in like Flynn. Okay, it is a lot. <laughs> so I mean, there you go. Are you surprised that the infestation spread so quickly? I it, apparently yeah. So <laughs> so anyways. Uh, they need in in world explanations. That's all it is. If people yeah, just sure. expanding the lore appropriately. You, uh, the the appropriate follow up question, Tom, that you didn't make that I was hoping you're going to make was how many of those did you have him print for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't going to out you. Uh, sure. Like, like I, I, like I know there's some in there. Like, there's no question in my mind. To which I plead the fifth. My other look, my other. <laughs> My other favorite army is Slanesh, okay? Look, it's when I see the opportunity to combine the two, what can I do? All right. Uh, at Spreading any Spreading to a table near you. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. So with that talk uh, finished, gentlemen, let's get into the Skaven book. 
Uh, by the way, of course, in my traditional style, I did add a few slides. Since I sent this to you, I'll warn you in advance. It's what I do. Uh, because I always think of more stuff. I send people slides in advance so they can prep for the show. And then as I'm sitting here on the day, I'm like, yeah, but also I want to say this. <laughs> so it's what happens. Okay, let's get into this. I'm going to throw out a little overview. And then Sam, I want to go over to you for your, your, your sense of things here. Here's, here's the notes that hit me on the overview. Uh, I think it's a good book. I think it feels like it didn't get the same love as the other 3.0 tomes. But it's a good book. Um, I said here, tap in, Johnny. It's your turn. I really do think this is like one of the most Johnny-ish books they've mm -hmm. ever made. Uh, there's lots and lots of power pair action here. It feels a lot like Cities, which I think is appropriate to some degree, both in its johnny -ish and in its power pair nature. Um, a great change was you have a lot more freedom for battle line, which is awesome. That was a huge problem in the old book. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really play with the 3.0 rules as much as most of the other books, like redeploy and rally abilities and command ability stuff. It's just like, there's just not a lot in that uh, that, that like plays with the current rule set. Like, unique monstrous rampages and, you know, whatever, whatever. Like, you would think you would see that stuff, but nope. Um, the good with the current battle pack, you have a lot of control over your battle line. So you can control what is GV and what is not. Um, and can have a good-sized unit pretty easy. So, like, you can play with that stuff really simply. Mm -hmm. um, bad with the current battle pack, a lot of your units are sort of forced galley vets. Like, if, if you... Um, if... <sighs> What I mean by that is like the galley vets you take that you sort of if, if you if you com are compelled to take them sometimes. So um, clan rats or, or storm vermin or other units that you happen to be bringing in as battle line who are often galley vets because most things in this are in this army are unmounted for wound or less infantry that are battle line or could be. They're just made of paper. Like, there's no mm -hmm. toughness in this force at all. And so they just get, like, they're very susceptible to bounty hunters. Right? And then the absolute worst part of this book for me is there's no ability to manipulate reinforcement points, which is just insane to me. It's insane to me. I, I cannot... I cannot wrap my head around the idea that Daughters of Cain have a way to manipulate reinforcement points and Skaven don't. Daughters of Cain are not a horde army. They're not. Okay. Sorry, Chuck. They are not. They're not. <laughs> the horde armies in this game are Skaven, Beast of Chaos, and Gits. And then it's all black arguably, as well. Chuck, Chuck the well, zombies in there. Like, there's a couple other ones that can, like, that, that, those are, like, that's your primary mm -hmm. way they're sort of assumed, right? Now, yeah, there's other can, armies, that like pivot. you said, like, yeah. that could pivot into it. Like, Soulblight could pivot into it. Fine Dock could be a pivot into it. I'll accept that's a valid play style, right? Um, you know, arguably even something like Cities could theoretically do so. They have a ton of just foot infantry that they could throw out cheap if they wanted, right? But the fact that in a primary horde army you just have you're locked on reinforcement points and it's worse in this than in most other tomes because mm -hmm. this book combines two things that suck um wanting to be a horde army and lots of really oddly small sized units that you may want to actually reinforce so you can do something with them the number of units in this book that are like two three five six six these six weird is so numbers. annoying yeah it's so weird like, and so as a result of that, you really feel the reinforcement point thing uh, badly in this book. Okay. There's all my, there's all my thoughts. Sam, did I, did I miss anything here on the overview or do you disagree with anything? What, what did I said? What do you think? Ooh, this is the greatest and best book in the world. <laughs> tribute it's like it's so close it's yeah. so close they 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 yeah so, they, tribute yes they almost they almost got there they almost got there i think uh th this is a book that loves I internal synergy and this is a book that is going to be able to uh migrate through as we have different ghbs and the meta evolves i think externally it, it's well placed um 
it's really interesting because who, who knows when it was supposed to be released. But the, the, in all likelihood, we we could have there could be a world where we played this last season, um, yep. and it'd be interesting well, to see how it plays into that very different meta and very different dynamic. Uh, and then you know we've got six months at the moment with um, seemingly difficult battle tactics and grand strategies um, that Skaven have some options to get relatively easily compared to other armies. So uh, I, I do like the direction that they've taken. Uh, I do like the uh, the modernization. I think it's it can sometimes be a little bit dangerous or problematic to do comparative analysis, particularly when that last book came out right at the start of second edition. Sort of like yeah. we're talking about a completely different game. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think overall there's, there's certainly been a power increase and overall there's, from my perspective, been an enormous um, increase the number of viable lists because they've just unlocked that battle line, that that battle line problem we had previously, where we became a a, a particular clan, and then we locked out everything else except for for one master clan character. So, uh, look, I I I love this book. Um, I think to all of your dot points, Vince, I, I would I would strongly agree. And the the one that I'd like to punctuate is just the reinforcements issue because it makes it it makes it very challenging to write a functional list that reflects what you expect the army to be like. So you can write really strong lists, right, which yeah. have big, hitty pieces um, or glass hammers like the sensor bearers, but it, it, it is very difficult to go your reinforced storm vermin or plague monks because the best bang for buck is always going to be clan rats because they're starting at 20. So to yep. get the bodies, you're, you're incentivized to, to reinforce them and, and not the others. But, um, yeah, the, the brief answer is yes, I agree with your overview. I think it's on point. Yeah, you really feel it. And I agree with what Stuart said. He's like, I love the book, but with no reinforcement point manipulations, they want you to spend a thousand points on heroes. And I, I find myself mm -hmm. doing that quite a lot just because either I'm out of reinforcement points or it's just what makes sense or I need to get I, I need to get in more units. Right. And so I'm just like, well, if I'm going to bring yep. in that unit, I've got to bring in its power pair hero to go with it, regardless of whether or not I'm mm -hmm. trying to make it battle line. I just the mm -hmm. unit without its its sort of buff piece is just not hitting at the level I need it to hit at. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom, what about you? Yeah, the like when I looked over it, the first thing that I thought, and you kind of hinted at this, uh, Sam, was I do, I just, I, I had to ask the question, like, so how long has this book been done? Right, right. It feels like it was made almost for a 2.0 world, and then, like, they just kind of went in and tweaked, like, a right. very few things. Right, Maybe like, I suspect this book was, like, done a year ago. And they were going to roll it out in early to mid, uh, early to mid fall. So we would have had it last season. And then it feels like just the delay, like the way that things rolled, right? The delay just kept pushing things back and pushing things back and pushing things back. Uh, because this would have been paired with the Sylvaneth box, right? like in the Solonath yeah. book. And so this could have very easily been like late last season or even mid season. So like beginning of this year, end of last year. So I just, I don't know. Yeah. Like, and the Sylvanath book does play with these mechanics, like wildly all the time. It's playing with new mechanics, like almost every single unit, which, which is what tells me that like, it feels like it, this is like probably book was probably done a while ago. Sure. Okay. So now we come to a new slide that I added since I sent this to all of you guys, which is which is insights. And so I want to go point by point here and get get some takes from both of you because mm -hmm. you haven't seen these before. So this is going to be hot takes from Sam oh. and Tom. Here we go. OK. <clears throat> um, and Gamma, just a real quick answer to that. I, I don't think it's it's a lackluster tome. It's a good tome. It just. I don't know. Yeah, it's a good tome. It got me really excited. I've been doing nothing but writing lists. Like, it'll be competitive. It'll be fun. I'm just saying it feels like it's not as good as it could be. Like, it felt like it's... it's You said it perfect, but it's like the greatest book in the world tribute, right? Like, it just... It's like they had the perfect book, and then they went, ah, but we can't, we can't do that. Right? Like, we were... So, I don't know. Okay. Here's my, here's my statements. This like book... Go ahead, go ahead, Tom, please. I was just say, it feels like they didn't explore all the design possibilities they could have. So it's not that it's lackluster, right? It's that it could have been that much better. Yeah, in reading it, you almost see what it what it could have been, 
Yes. Right. Absolutely. You just right. look so at that that open fertile ground and you're like, how did you not plow that field? Right. It feels like the trade that we've made for volume. We have all these war scrolls is quality. Like it would it would be nicer to have fewer scrolls uh, and sadly have to retire a few of our models, but for everything to be relevant and meaningful. Uh, and obviously, that's a choice they've they've opted not to make, and instead they've kept the warp fire thrower from 1992. So great. Yeah. Well, hey, hey, <laughs> the good news is this could always be like the new Lumineth, the Chaos Lumineth. Don't don't where... be taking my thunder, Tom. Do not be taking my thunder for my final bullet point. You shut your dirty mouth, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So I'm glad you said the scrolls thing, Sam, because yep. I, that's actually my first point. There's lots of scrolls. It's lighter on sort of allegiance abilities, right? It's more about the synergy, the combo of the scrolls, that kind of thing. You look at something like Night Hunt, does not have a large number of scrolls, and it's just like six individual, powerful, army-wide-ish mm-hmm. allegiance abilities affecting things in a big way, right? Which is fine, by the way. I'm not like I'm not saying, oh darn, we don't have enough of them. They went a different direction. Here, the power is resting more in the scrolls and the synergies and the combos, and. You know, that's just an interesting thing that happens. Like, they almost feel in these books that have tons of scrolls, they have to be really careful with allegiance abilities so that they can actually, like, control what's going on. Mm-hmm. Because because of the permutations. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, any, what do you think? Agree? Disagree? Sound right? Strongly agree. Okay. Take that one. All right, there we go. Uh, number two. Battleshock will be a thing. Get used to it with this army. Uh, because you largely have to spread out if you want to run lots of un- like units. Because, again, aforementioned reinforcement point thing. Because you don't really have any big boost to you know bravery or anything like that anymore, like Skaven traditionally got through their, their strength and numbers and so on. Uh, and you only have really one piece that you could include that provides like blanket battle shock immunity mm-hmm. and that piece is of questionable value outside of uh uh a couple very particular builds um like you're gonna battle shock stuff you're an army of bravery four and five and when like there's a lot of stuff in the game now that just kind of poops mortal wounds around yep you know like, I played a game this weekend, uh, which I'll reference a couple times. I've, I've gotten three games in so far with this tome, so pretty good. Hoping to get more this weekend, holiday weekend. But there was a, I was facing Techless and the Technado, and that thing was just, you know, a wrecking ball. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> because it was just, like, blow a couple guys out of each unit. And, and then, then Battleshock on these. And then Battleshock would happen, and I'd lose a couple more. So it's just, like, slowly bleeding out everything, right? Um... So, and I, and Techless, I, I wasn't running a magic heavy list, so I didn't have the magic power to stop him. I picked the worst list for that potential matchup. Um, so what do you think, Sam? Battleshock, welcome to the world. Yeah, I, I think the value of that Warp Seer Vermin Lord popping out Bravery 10 in a bubble uh, is, is really significant. Also, the, the helps that he gives you the double Master Clan hero. But yeah, the Warp Seer is, is obviously going to be a really significant thing. I think... Uh, playing under, playing 60 points under, and going double triumph with two immune to battle shocks is a legitimate approach. Uh, and I think, you know, unfortunately, the furnace probably doesn't cut it. So it's still giving you the immune to battle shock, whereas the bell's not any longer. Uh, but yeah, I think battle shock is massively a problem, p- particularly when um, there are units like in Stormcast, there's a heap of units that can do splash damage. Uh, yeah. In in Seraphon, the engine of the gods can do splash damage. There's a heap of viable units in the meta at the moment that can hurt multiple units in one one go and if if you're running msu and trying to trade which is i think probably the the clearest path to victory for this skaven book um you're, you're going to be in trouble from a battle shock perspective yep okay agreed uh my my st- next statement is uh decent internal balance not mm-hmm. exceptionally but but decent it's pretty good um, most of the units have some play. Like, I've written a lot of different units into my lists. There are exceptions. There are some units that I just don't think have any purpose in the world. Um, but there's not many of those. Uh, so that's that's not bad. It's pretty good. Most units you can be like, yeah, all right, I could see a list that, that uses those to, the, to a good degree. 
Sam, what's your thought? Yeah, look, there, there's a hierarchy within the book. Like, yep. unquestionably, there are some things that are better than others, but there's a use case for every single war scroll. So there's not a single war scroll in there that if you were trying to be competitive, um, you, you could discard straight away. You need to look at everything, and sometimes it's going to come down to composition, points, what you, what the function of that unit is. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I said, ultimately, like some things are going to be better. Like, for instance, the named assassin is better than the standard assassin. But if you don't have the additional points and you need that third Eshin hero, for instance, uh, then you, you're going to take a Death Master. So that, that's, yeah, I think across the board, um, everything is viable, which is fantastic. Uh, but ultimately, obviously, you're going to get... You, you, that The list will narrow over time <laughs> until yeah, there's sure. a, sort of an Ascendant build or a couple of Ascendant builds, but that's not to say that you can't explore every single unit in the book, uh, which is a great starting point. Yeah, I would argue there's one scroll that you will never put in a list, but okay. We'll, we'll see if you agree uh, when we get there. <laughs> okay. I'm interested. Okay. Yeah, there's there's my, uh, there's, there's my, one in particular. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, so, grand strats. The uh, the grand strats that I like out of the basic, I'm not well, I'm not talking about the battle tome grand strats. I'm saying like if you're picking the from the existing grand strats, the way you should be picking because battle tome grand strats and battle tactics shouldn't exist and should all be uh, hurled into the sun like nuclear weapons in Superman four. Uh, so the three I picked here as like potentials, there's no great ones for you, but potentials are no place for the weak, which is kill all of the enemy battle line. Um, it's something that you just are going to be highly incentivized to do in the current meta anyways, because those battle line are often going to be GVs and you want to eliminate them uh, for a large number of reasons. Uh, take what's theirs, which is having yep. people in their deployment zone. This book is like teleportathon 2022. You have a million ways yep. to be anywhere you want on the board. So like getting into their territory is generally not hard. And then finally show of dominance because you have, you may have a ton of GVs sort of accidentally, and the fact that you can just have one 25 millimeter dum dum survive and then go walk into the center of the the board and complete this grand strat with one model, uh, in round five or 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 whatever is is valuable. So there you go. Those those are my choices uh, as far as like what grand strats I think have potential for exploration. How about that? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, Sam. That yeah, they're the ones. I think the getting into the opponent's territory is the one that I've tried so far and achieved every time. That's mm-hmm. relatively easy um, with the just with the mobility of the army uh, and the the damage output. So yeah, I, I like that one. Yep. Uh, hammers is my next point. Just hammers. Um, hammers. This book has many units that are or can become through synergies very strong hammers, but. Everything is made of paper, so units have to be used carefully. You mentioned already, like, the concept of trading properly. I think it's a huge deal in this book. Like, you've got to use your units right. You've got to make sure they get in the good fights. You've got to trade appropriately or you're dead in the water. Because, like, you don't really have things that can take hits. Um, there's no true anvils. There's a couple things that you're like, yeah, it's okay. It can, it, can, it can withstand a little bit of a punch, but nothing is like a true anvil here. Seem right? Yeah, this... This army really um, feels the the lack of Hunters of the Heartlands. So mm-hmm. a roar can be quite impactful on this army because quite a few of your hammer units are hammers contingent on the right buffs being up. Yep, so yep. In, the, in the event you, you cop a, a Sphinx or the Cockatrice or some 90-point monster into your, your horde of 30 guys, uh, that can that can quickly... Um, switch switch the numbers quite dramatically in terms of the potential damage output that they're doing. So, um, or let's say, I like think... I did this weekend, you play an entire game under total eclipse. Let's just imagine oh, that. Yeah. That's another, <laughs> and are forced to go first every turn to stay in the game. Yeah, that great. Kind of <laughs> yeah, Teclas isn't kind to this army, is he? It's, no, he's uh, not. He's a real problem. He's a rough matchup. Yeah. yeah. Him, him and the him and the coalesced, with, which still has monsters, they're the two that are going to be really tough for this army to play. Yeah. Um, possibly among others, but yeah, the, I think um, the hammers 
uh, interesting because the the Rat Ogres and the Storm Vermin obviously have had their their save change to a four up. Mm-hmm. So if you get a Mystic Shield on, you, you can do a little bit of Hammer and Anvil with those. But c- you know, compared to a Nurgle Anvil, it's not an Anvil at all. So right. uh, yeah, the durability is going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Finally, final point. Is this book one? It's tinfoil hat time. Here we go. You ready? Okay. You you stole exactly what I was going to say, Tom. Is this our LRL book one? Okay. Look. Plans within plans, machinations of the Council of 13. Clearly, there should have been a model release for this. Clearly. But the timing just didn't work out. So, my hope is that this the reason that this book feels like we didn't explore everything we could is because that book is coming in the future. Like, that's the book we're going to put all the effort into, and that's the book that comes with the relaunch of all the super sweet sculpts. Maybe that's like six months, eight months, a year from now. I don't know. I'm just throwing out ideas. I'm just saying, keep hope alive. That's that's my that's my tinfoil hat. Sam, what do you what do you think about my tinfoil hat theory? Nope. It's a nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. I don't yeah I don't I don't hold any hope for those sort of things I'm I'm very content with what they've given us um I obviously would have loved new sculpts but I yeah I think we'll probably have this one all the way up to AOS 4 that would be my that would be my guess there's no way there's no way that this lasts till AOS 4 at the very least we get a new campaign book Mm -hmm. um with some updates and some updated ranges I there's just you know, and as Vince, as we're going to point out in the slideshow, like some of the models in here, like, woof, GW, <laughs> like you are you are hurting your corporate image by selling those models because you sell yourself as a model company, and literally having those on the market lowers your brand identity. You are damaging your brand by selling those models. I, I look at those. That. I look at that, and I'm just like, "Yeah, I could go for some Ralph Partha." <laughs> sure, sure. All right, cool. Well, well time will tell. Uh, two very, some very different opinions. I guess we'll see. I will hold out hope. Uh, okay, let's jump right into this, gentlemen. Here we go. Let's get into the allegiance abilities. Okay. Uh. We're going to cover... I'll, I'll just read through this stuff quickly and then we'll kind of talk about it, right? Yeah. So you got three basic battle traits. Lead from the back, which is basically we get, uh, you know, the same neg one to hit that you normally get in shooting uh, if you're in melee. So you're little for your little heroes. This is non-monsters gain this. Okay? So you get lookouts or in combat if you're not a monster. Cool. Good. Scurry away. Uh, in the combat phase, when you pick a friendly Skaven hero that does not have a mount uh, to fight, you can scurry away instead. If you do so, that hero can retreat. So you can leave combat every time you activate with one of your heroes, as long as they don't have a mount. So that means no bells, no thankful. Um, which is ironic, because he scurries away quite a lot in the comics, but or in the <laughs> stories, I should say. Uh, okay, and then finally, strength in numbers, which is like the real winner of this group. <laughs> Um, add one inch to the range of melee weapons used by friendly Skaven units for every 10 models in the unit to a maximum of three inches, which is obviously amazing on 25 mil bases because you can fight four deep, which means you just, you're always all fighting, uh, a lot, especially if you do have those larger units, which is cool. Um, okay. So basic battle traits, Sam, what's your take on the basic battle traits? Good stuff. Fine. Yeah, they're excellent. Obviously, small small change to scurry away in that they've added that line about being mounted. Yep. Uh, and, and then oh, I think the strength in numbers is uh, a significant and, and meaningful buff for the army, p- particularly when you've got units like Night Runners that can do mortal wounds. So mortal wounds with a three-inch reach means that support characters are in all sorts of danger. Um, and I think... Both of those rules, scurry away and strength in numbers, um, highlight the absence of something in the book, and that's the fly keyword. So mm-hmm. you, you need levitate. That's the first spell you want on your list. Uh, and if you can, I think the the Eshin, um, the Eshin, incredible. Uh, yeah, being able to fly. I think both those things. The value of them is really significant. Uh, and I, I love scurry away is my favorite rule for stealing objectives off opponents in their turn. 
They sure. they try to they go to tie you up. You get away. You've suddenly got a monster somewhere that means you're holding it by one. Beautiful. That's the the most Skaven of Skaven plays. Yeah, yeah. It is notable that the vermin lords can all do scurry away, right? So yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. And they're running around counting as five, which can be good. Or or it could be you could be outnumbered by two hundred and thirty five, depending on sort of the nature <laughs> of, of expert conquerors, I guess, that happen to be are on that objective. That's quite a range. Uh, you win by one or two, or you are outnumbered by 235. Could go either direction. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So then the next layer down is basically each of the clans have some set of rules based on their heroes. It's, this is an iteration of the previous book. I like this design. I'm glad they didn't try to like shove sub factions in here. Mm -hmm. Uh, so like, first of all, thank you. For deviating from the design when appropriate for the army, this is a great choice. I'm glad they continued this. Uh, I love it. It's my favorite thing is that they let you do this, and it does it ups the Johnny ish of the, the nature of the mm-hmm. book because you like your hero choices you're making are having these different picks and influences. That being said, I do wish we could come to like some kind of parity between these because some of these are actually really interesting, especially in the take one, take three hero mm-hmm. section, and mm-hmm. some of these are like not that (laughs) so at any rate okay so master clan which is obviously like your your gray seers and and uh some of the vermin lords who belong to this this particular clan uh roll a dice before you allocate a wound or mortal wound to a friendly master clan hero that's not a monster or instead of making a ward roll or a wound or mortal wound that would be allocated to a friendly master clan hero that's not a monster on a three up uh, they can allocate it to a friendly Skaven unit with three or more models. So basically, Master Clan non monster heroes. Uh, so this is going to be your Grace Ear. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, because I all the rest of them are monsters. Uh, can pass off wounds on a three up over to over to other units. So cool. Okay. Good. Um, and it doesn't stop ward saves on that other unit. Uh, like that is to say like the other unit can still make its own ward against that wound. Mm-hmm. Um, not always super relevant or rare, rarely relevant, I suppose, since most Skaven units you would be passing to. And I don't know if any actually, as I, as I think about it, mm-hmm. don't have a ward save base, but you do have many priests and priests do get bless and bless is a mm-hmm. six up ward. And that ain't nothing when you're dealing, especially with larger hordes. Like, well, uh, yeah. so it's something. This development also made me go like, what happened to the Claw Lord? Well, I mean, we're going to get to the Claw Lord. We'll get to him in a second. So because he's obviously shows up in Verminous, right? So, right. so I mean, we'll 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 get to what happened to him because I I don't love the way they changed his thing, but it's interesting right. and it's also what was he always yeah. Verminous or was he ever? He was always yeah. Verminous. Yeah, oh, okay. okay, yeah, you're fine. Now, if you've got three Master Clan peeps, okay. Then you get always three claw steps ahead, which in my estimation is one of the most powerful rules they wrote in this entire book. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because this rule is wild, son. Okay, here we go. So after you pick a friendly Skaven unit, it gives you three abilities, right? So by the way, it doesn't matter if those heroes die. It's about list construction. Like once you've cleared the gate of list construction, you have these abilities for the game. There's no proximity, there's no survival, it's just this is this is a thing that's on now, which is amazing. Okay, so here's the simplest form of it. When you pick your first unit to run and you make your run roll, you can make that everybody's run roll. Fine, it's a good enough rule. There's not like run and charge really to be had around here, so it's not the biggest deal. But if you happen to, if you're going to be running with multiple units to like get in position or take objectives or do something, and the first unit you run, you pop that six, hey, what a great day it is to be you, right? You roll the five or six, you're like, yeah, sure, okay, everybody runs five or six, let's do this, right? So it's fine. It's a fine roll. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, Now the powerful one. Okay, after you pick a friendly Skaven unit to be your first unit to attempt a charge in a phase and make a charge roll for that unit, you can use that charge roll in place of any other charge rolls you make for friendly Skaven units until the end of that phase. This is pointed out. I, I'm i glad that Stuart and I both came to this simultaneously because I was playing around with this too. You notice what word isn't there, Tom? Unmodified. Exactly correct. <laughs> and there are actually very large charge bonuses in this book. The first, 
the first thing that I saw when I read that was I was like, oh, so they want us to cheat. Yes. Good to know. So you can <laughs> you can like it is move your buff around. <laughs> yeah, it is quite reasonable that you can that you can you know get a unit under plus three to charge. That's actually very easy and roll that out so even on an average of a seven let's just let's just say you roll the complete average number of a seven on two six um that's a 10 which means every unit in your army that's charging is now charging 10 which is a great charge i'm all about it so you know you know who i would like that on night hunt i i'm sure i'm sure yeah uh so that was fine yes please yes and then the third one is after you pick a friendly unit your first unit to pile in, everybody gets to pile in. Um, now that does they don't pile in and fight. You don't have right. that. They just sure. pile in, which lets it's them. It's still pile a nightmare. It's yeah. still a nightmare because, like, have I don't know. I have a hundred and thirty models on the table. Here we go, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. touch everything, move it three inches, and then when you activate, you do it again. Sure. Like I just. Fortunately, as we said, you're not actually going to end up with many hordes. It's just really yeah. not the way this army breaks out most of the yeah. time. So it it's useful for like what's going to happen is you're going to pile in with one thing and then you're going to have your other horde unit kind of flood up and around and flood yeah. up and around and use that reach. So let's return back to strength and numbers and Sam, something you mentioned because you're exactly right. Like the fact that everybody's packing a three inch reach and now can potentially sneak six inches around means support heroes aren't safe if they're trying to hide behind the line because suddenly you're like, your way out there effectively <laughs> getting like nine inches deep to start whacking at them. Right. So you can get pretty deep. With you can get real inches. deep. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yep. I know. So the, the, this is like, it's a great ability. I like it. I like master clan rules. It's fantastic. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Sam, what's your, what's your take on this one? I love this. This has so much utility and, and you can do so many uh, meaningful things with it. I think the thing that I've been playing around with at the moment is the Clan Eshen, um, the Deceiver, the Vermin Lord. So he gets to teleport six inches away. Um, the named the named Clan Eshen unit get to deep strike six inches away oh, and then yes. you give a block of six Rat Ogres plus three to charge. Yep. Mm-hmm. And um, if your Rat Ogres then hit a three-inch charge, you know both your other units are getting in. Uh, and then because of the the sequencing, the the named Death Master fights first. So he fights, then his friends pile in, then well, the then Deceiver leaves. piles in. Yeah, <laughs> he, he leaves after his fort. And then the um, you basically have three hammers all fighting before the opponent even gets to choose. And then the amount of shooting from the Deceiver and the the unit of gutter runners um, is not inconsequential. It's enough to pick off screens and it's enough to pick off stuff sitting behind screens. So you, you can do three activations in a row, one of which the character then runs away afterwards, one of which the, the monster's done a roar or done a stomp or whatever as well, um, it, before your opponent gets to choose. And the, the damage, potential damage output there is is significant. It, it's not dissimilar to Ideneth in turn three. And mm. uh, you can do that any turn of the game. So you, you don't have to use it as an alpha, but you've always got it up your sleeve. Um, and so to answer a question in the comments, somebody said, can you, can you use the command ability to set a run to six and then make everybody run six? No, you can't nice. because the, it, it specifically says after you make a run roll and that's not what yeah. setting the run to six does. It just adds six inches to your movement instead of rolling. Yeah. So, okay. Good stuff. Boom. Boom. Clans Molder. Uh, the one you're Whatever. probably not going to have three of <laughs> because the bonus doesn't <laughs> do anything. I don't know why we took away the ability to bonus Rat Ogres. That could have been cool. But I, I mean, I understand we integrated some of the buffs directly into Rat Ogres, which is fine. We'll talk about that. But but still, would have been neat. Uh, at any rate, now what you do is you get to pick a bonus for your Hell Pit Abomination. So, like, now, I will say that might make you think every time you take a Master Molder, which is your only mortal Molder hero. Um, hashtag Vermin Lord for Molder win. Uh, but like you, you're, you just automatically put a help it in. No, 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 no. Master molders are perfectly fine. They are functional. They don't need this rule. They, they don't care about this rule. And four rat ogres for my money are a better buy than a help it in basically every situation ever. 
Uh, so, you know, if you take three, you get to add stuff to all your help hits. So if you're the weirdo, no judgment, but if you're the weirdo who's like all master molders and help hits and that's what you're looking for, okay, you can, you can do that. You can take some, some fun, weird, different help hits. So, um, I try to help it in my game against Lumineth. Um, I got tech NATO'd. He rolled the five or six to get the D6 mortal wounds. I failed the Warpstone spikes. He took five mortal wounds. And then the Sentinels shot him. And it was only 20 Sentinels in this particular unit. They shot him and spiked 12 mortal wounds into him. And he dropped dead. And then I rolled a one and he died. <laughs> Great use of that guy. <laughs> Could have been better. <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, at any rate. Um, it is like there is fun to be had with help hits. I don't want to. We'll, we'll talk about them when we get to their scroll. Mm. But these are fine. There's there is a couple of decent options on this table if you're interested in having a help hit. And um, so yeah, there you go. Cool. Uh, uh, yes, that is a good point. The help hit gets an upgrade without even one master molder. Yes, that is true. Okay. Uh, I skipped right straight with that one past you guys' take because I don't think it was going to be any different than mine. <laughs> I just didn't think yeah. anything more to say about it. hundred percent. It's just the least interesting one. And it could have been super cool, but I think they just knew that like, nah, these old sculpts, man, we can't, we can't too much incentivize people to play these particular things. These are terrible. Uh, what are people going to think if they walk into game stores and see tables full of all of these models from the nineties? <laughs> okay. Clan Eshin, masters of murder. So basically with your one hero, Start of the first battle round after determining who has the first turn. Before the first turn begins, you pick one enemy hero on the battlefield. You add one to hit and wound rolls for all your Eshin units that target that hero. Not just him, everybody. Plus one to hit and wound. Cool. And it's just attacks, by the by. So ranged and yep. melee. Super good. If you have three or more Eshin heroes, then you add one to hit and wound rolls uh, for attacks made with melee weapons only that target enemy heroes. But all enemy heroes. So now it's plus one to hit wound for all your Eshin units against all heroes, but only in melee. Um, I don't love that they made that distinction. I don't know why we just didn't keep the same rule, but there you go. Sam, what's your take on Eshin's on the on the Masters of Murder here? Yeah, I think it's good. I mean, um, it, it certainly is cleaner than all the rerolls we have previously. So there's, there's this thing previously, sixes to hit were exploding hits, so you're getting extra hits, and then you're re-rolling to wound. Um, and you roll quite a lot of dice, and it was inconsequential. inconsequential. So, um, mm. yeah, this is fine. I mean, it's nowhere near as strong as the Master Clan one, but I still like it. And there have been a few small buffs across the Eshin War Scrolls anyway in terms of what they're hitting and wounding on um, that mean ultimately you're getting to, to threes to wound, which is just as good as re-rolling anyway. Tom? Yeah, I mean, like, I think that it's, it just strikes me that the um, that the word, like, I think that, that 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 was a mess up. Let me just say that for the Master Assassin. I think that it was probably supposed to be melee all along. Oh, and they just forgot it off of the first one? Yeah, and they forgot it off the first one. Because... The reality is, is like, like when I see that, that incentivizes me because they have so much shooting to yeah. just do one. Yeah, well, it's interesting, too, because they have, honestly, I think some really strong heroes that you can very easily find yourself, including three of in an army. Right. Uh, so right. It's, it's kind of an interesting paradigm there. Yeah. So it just strikes me that when I when I saw that, I was like, oh, so they want me to not do three. Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, and so that, that given the design of the rest of the stuff, that seems like just simply like a mistake. Okay. Um, the plus one to hit and wound. I like, I like that. I like the idea that it's on the range attacks, given that, that like, there's just a proliferation. Um, uh, it makes me want to run Eshin. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. If only. Okay. Uh, clan verminous. This is the weird one. So, basically your verminous heroes but not all of them just the claw lord not the warbringer the one who i want to be doing cool stuff with uh he gets his uh, the claw lord gets his own heroic action and so 
when you use it, you can pick a command trait. We'll talk about the command traits in a moment. And basically, he gets it. Now, you can double stack a command trait. So if you happen to make a Claw Lord or General, he can, he can get two. Like, he can have one and then absorb a second one if he uses this heroic action. So that's cool. Neat stuff there. And if you have three or more Claw Lords, which is like a very... That is an unusual build, to say the least. Not just verminous heroes, like everybody else... Not the good verminous hero I want to put in a list and I built lists around. No, no. I gotta have three stupid Claw Lords, which are fine. I like Claw Lords. I mean, I own seven painted Claw Lords. Mm -hmm. So, whatever. Um, You then, everybody gets to do it. <laughs> right? Like, everybody gets to do the heroic action. It breaks the normal rule. You can all go, all three of them are all three plus, get to command trade up. Um, but they just can't pick the same one. Um, there is some interesting, you know, like, uh, things you can sort of pick into here. It's not, it's not a complete nothing burger, um, but it's, it's not amazing. Sam? It's, this is pointless. <laughs> it's a, there's a plus two attacks one, which potentially like will be nice. And there's one where you ignore the first two wounds each phase, uh, which could potentially right. be nice, but there, yeah, there's, there's nothing you would design a list around with, with these in mind. Right. Right. Tom. It's okay. Yeah, it's exactly. Fine. It's fine. That's yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, clan scryer. Uh, Hey, did you like Warpstone sparks? Cool. Well, they still do what they did before. Basically. I mean, there's a few very minor changes around the edges, but nothing of consequence. Uh, they were great before. They're great now. If you take three heroes, you get D6 plus three sparks instead of D3 plus three sparks. That's the difference. Cool. Great. A plus. Sparks are awesome. They, they, they did amazing things before. They still do amazing things now. They let you reroll casts and unbinds into spells. They let you give plus one damage to shooting units you want to give plus one damage to. And if you're a psychopath like me who often gets in fights with his Arch Warlock, you can get plus one to, to hit and, and, and wound rolls for that guy. Um, because I want my rat and power armor to go mess people up. Um, so anyways, they're all good. They're all fun. They're sparks. They work like they did before. They were great before. They're great now. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Clan Pestilence. Same thing again, but there is some minor changes. Like You still have your Great Plagues. The difference yep. is... This one's a really interesting way that they incentivize this. When you make a chanting roll for our clans, pestilent priests, you can add one to that chanting roll for each other friendly clans, pestilent priests, wholly within 13 of the caster. So, like, that's yeah, kind know. of how they're incentivizing it, right? Like, the more yep. priests you're around ritualing together, it's great. You get bonuses. It's cool. Great. Um, I will state this does apply to any uh, chant they make, not just to the pestilence prayers so like let's say you took curse which is normally on a four if you've got like a couple other priests around you can get that down to a two pretty easy or you're standing near a, a, a gnaw hole you can get that down to a two because that also adds one so um in so addition good. if the chanting roll for a friendly prayer is a six plus is a six plus <laughs> yes the plus matters yes it matters a lot because i just mentioned that there are ways to get like many mm -hmm. bonus assists to this roll like, yes. if you've got a couple Plague Priests hanging out together and they're near a gnaw hole, uh, some, th this is going to trip. Prayers, prayers still always fail on ones, though, right? Yeah, Yeah, but the first great prayer you choose is reroll cast prayers for the rest of the game. Right. So, turn one, the first guy goes to cast a yep. prayer, um, rolls Triggers a two, yeah. <laughs> counts as a six plus, the rest of the army's rerolling, and then there's a battle tactic built into this one as well where you just need to successfully cast three prayers so you can you can do that relatively easily. Yep. Uh, and, I mean, they did up some of these plagues in uh, yeah, some ways to, to be good. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, like, Undulant Scourge um, is a nice horde killer. Uh, bubonic blight plague starting off at 2d6 mortal wounds they're still all like you have to pick the closest thing when you right, do it right, so that can right. very much limit 13 inches and the closest thing within that range so that can yep. very much still limit what you happen to pick and how useful it is but they're cool because they're, they're easier to fire off now so you can actually have multiple great plagues occur um, during a, 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 a round I 
in the game against Lumineth, a funny thing happened where my uh, plague sensor that was stuck because all of its escorts had been killed. So it's just sitting there. Always. 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 That's the way it happens. Uh, he rolled and hit the six up. And the closest unit was the, the LRL antelope hero. You know, the like, not the named one. Yep. But the the other mountain. One. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no. The, the little, the, the dude who showed up from Tyrion. Like the yeah. little, the mounted hero Ooh, who has the, the little knight. Antelope, right? uh, yes. Yeah. Yep. I cannot remember his name, but he's got six wounds. Now, Teclis is on the board, so he has a four-up ward. He's right. my nearest target. He's the only thing I'm going to target with any of these. He's not any good in melee, so I didn't pick Red Maw, even though I could have picked Red Maw. Like, he wasn't, he, he wasn't fighting me He wasn't all. threatening you, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't mm-hmm. in combat with me in any way, and he was, what's he going to do, turn around and do no damage to wardens, because that's who he was adjacent to. And I'm right. like, that's whatever. So I picked Bubonic Blight Plague, and I was like, let's give this a shot. 2d6 mortals... Six wound hero, unwounded with a four up ward. Incredibly unlikely I kill him. Roll the dice, boxies. 12 mortal wounds. I'm like, okay, on stats, I kill him. Of course, the four up ward breaks against me. He gets seven successes. The dude lives. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy because then I don't get to carry the the mortal yeah. wounds on. But it was still a fun moment. It was a, it was a nice. And that's what this generates. This generates those like wacky moments like that. So it's good. Uh, I think Priest. Priests are really good in this edition. Yeah. So yeah. if you look at if you look at the the way that Seraphon function, they they're relying on four wound skink priests. Daughters of Cain have a high reliance on priests. Um, Fire slayers, stormcast. There's a lot of there's a lot of priests that actually matter in this game, and being able to smite at distance, and because that's also a six plus for the additional wounds. So being able to smite at distance um, and and then being able to proc a Great Plague means you can really threaten those units. And then being able to teleport and and shoot and your shooting range is greater than the the nine-inch gap means that um, you can put a lot of pressure on really important support heroes from your opponent's army from turn one. And then that can affect the way they deploy. That can affect the way they play. Um, it's really, really strong. I, I love the changes that they've they've made to Pestilence. My only issue um, is having the, the hero slots available because there are so many um, support heroes that Skaven have that you're now wanting to take to utilize your allegiance abilities. Right. And you're now wanting to take to get access to some amazing artifacts we'll touch on shortly. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, uh, oh we, we're going to talk. <laughs> I mean, I will say, like, yes, some of those are just blatantly just, like, over the top strong. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really like the Pestilence. Like, when I looked at this, I, the package, this is the one that appealed to me the most. And not because it's Nurgle, but just because of, of all of the boxes that it ticks, mm-hmm. of all the different things that it's doing. Sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And there's there's some, like, Pestilence got a glow up overall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you. um... For anyone that that's that missed our previous Gaven video, I'll recap the Red Moor. So yeah. the the Red Moor gives us access to um, the unit, and we're we're treating it as a friendly unit. We're able to use abilities on its War Scroll, so we can we can Red Moor Kairos and use his once per game dice manipulation <laughs> to make sure he bops a blue horror on the head, uh, make that an auto hit or whatever. And we can use Gotrek and and fight twice and all those things. So just yeah, be be aware that there there are some some uses there where and particularly because you've got the the teleport you can teleport to six or nine inches away from characters and you're on a small base uh there are some uses there where it's worth trading a priest knowing you'll certainly die um but p- potentially gaining control of archaeon or, or or whomever it might be burning pennies and lrl let's do this yeah sure just like <laughs> yeah. immediately that unit pennies to, to block to not only burn <laughs> its penny but also block the other pennies from being yeah, you can't that use base. anymore yeah. that's yeah. right yeah Yep. Okay. Uh, command traits. All right. I just want to say one thing about this. Layout person at GW. Who did this to you? <laughs> who made you do this? <laughs> this The person who is employed to do their professional, normally extremely high quality layouts. And GW really has beautiful, beautiful books. Their layout people are awesome. Please tell me who made you do this, because I believe they committed a crime against you. You may have legal recourse, okay? I can put you in touch with people, because this is horrendous. Horrendous. No layout person in the universe chose this. This was a dictate from somebody. Okay. So, 
They're still separated by clan. But there's three I per mean, clan plus a general. Not really, but yes. But yes, but on the page, they're just it's just it's bold. A wall. It's bold after bold. So it's and there's just no indentation. So nope. you don't even know, like, is this ability? I don't know. It's a requirement. The number of times I've scanned for the thing I'm looking for and started in the wrong place, and then had to be like, wait, okay, I got to. Do I need to go up or down? It's just wild. Okay. <laughs> There's a little Easter egg in here because that verminous um, said you can take the command traits from page 70 or page 71 i was like all the verminous are on 71 only when i saw that did i realize that the very first one isn't contingent on being part of a clan if they hadn't had the if they hadn't had the verminous thing i don't know how long it would have taken me to work out my deceiver can get extra attacks yeah yeah no absolutely they're Uh, hidden away there (laughs) it's just so so anyways this is all wild but like Mm -hmm. i don't know you normally i say everybody tell me your favorite man a lot of these are worth discussing because there's actually some really interesting things going on in command traits in this book so i guess let's just kind of talk them through briefly and then if we have nothing to say we'll just move on like if there's nothing to say we won't say anything fair enough yep. okay devious adversary is exactly what you just said that's the generic one if you fight within within three inches of an enemy unit that is not yet fought so very easy to achieve depending on how you, you just position your guy you don't even have to have be the one who fought first, obviously, because if they're within two units, you can trade around and all that. Uh, you add two to the attacks characteristic of this general's melee weapons. Great, not a specific melee weapon, all their melee weapons. Some people have multiple melee weapons, for example. Super useful. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, good, great. I like it. It's very useful if you're building a combat guy. Yep, Warbringer, Deceiver, love this. Corruptor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh... So, out of the Master Clan ones, maybe this is how we tackle this, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, there is one that I like out of the three Master Clan ones, okay? Which is just Master of Magic. You can reroll casting, dispelling, and unbinding rolls for this general. Why not just have the same named but better version of the Universal <laughs> Command Trait? Because this is all not one spell. Yeah. yeah. So, that's the good one. Um, I don't like the whole stealing people. Like, I don't like the way those command, this this thing works. I hate these abilities. This is a personal thing. Like the diabolical schemer where every, yep. you're within 13 inches of them, they try to issue a command. You roll a five up. They, it doesn't get received. Um, but they still lost the point, and then you gain one. It's just a total kick in the nuts um, for no reason. And it's also really easy to avoid and gamey because they can just, like, oftentimes... Uh, they can oftentimes just have the model be slightly outside of range and still issue into range and stuff like that. So I just don't like this thing at all, but I don't know. Sam, take on any of the master clan stuff. Uh, master of magic every yeah. time, if, yeah. if, particularly if you're running the, um, the warp series, your general. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. It is his best mm-hmm. friend, mm-hmm. Mr. Mm-hmm. I have an awesome spell. That's on an eight to cast, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he, he, he likes that reroll a lot. Uh, all right. Molder style. Uh, okay. So Molder, if you want to make a 90 point hero with, with five wounds and a five up, save your general, which is a bold move, but let's say you're going to do that. Okay. Okay. Then your reward for that can be, he can get the same three up ward. So he might be survivable. So you can burn your whole command trait just to make this little idiot survivable. Fine. Where he can pass wounds to, to units, basically. Mm-hmm. You can get Molder Supreme, which is plus one to hit and wound rolls for attacks made by friendly fighting beast units wholly within 13, which sounds amazing if there wasn't so many better ways to get those exact same bonuses in other places. Um, but okay. And then uh, Horde Master, with let, which lets you three up, replace a destroyed unit. Um cool but well, an ability the master molder also has um so cool but it doesn't take a command point to use it here so can we i know we talked about formatting but can i just ask a question sure why didn't each clan just get a page uh-huh or a box <laughs> something i no, don't just know like Tom. a page like just... because you can put like command traits on the top 
items on the bottom were done. They could have gone you farther. To flick. You have to been, flick to find the synergy. It could have been the special ability as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? It could have been like, here's your molder thing. Here's the command traits. Here's the artifacts. We could have done it like that. It would have broken their normal format, but it would have been so much more readable. Yes, I, I don't know, Tom. I don't know. They're paying by the page. Inflation, man. I'll tell you what. It's crazy. <laughs> okay. Are any of would any of these ever Sam, would any of these ever make you want to take a molder general? No. Perhaps this is future proofing. Maybe we're we're getting a, a molder hero in, in Tom's expansion book. Yes. Yes. There we go. Yeah, if I get like a sweet Molder Vermin Lord or something, mm-hmm. or they bring back like a you know Brood Horror. Yeah, exactly. The Brood Horror. You remember the old Verminous guy on Brood Horror, right? It but bring that back but make it like a master molder on Brood Horror, which mm-hmm. would make more sense mm-hmm. anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh like that would be fantastic. Then I could be all in on something like Molder Supreme. That'd be great. Have that dude running up there, going wild with all his boys beside him. Sure. Sure. But yeah, right now it's it's a that's gonna be a no for me, dog. That's gonna be a pass. All right. Eshin stuff. Uh, Clan Eshin hero. This general counts as two Eshin heroes for the purposes of the trait. So funny. It's That's just the most hilarious Not- thing to me to burn a <laughs> command trait on. Like, what? Oh, my gosh. Uh, sh- so, okay. That, that's unri- Unrivaled Killer, by the way, is the name of that. I don't know sure. what part of that makes you an unrivaled killer because that that ability because he counts as two awesomes not yeah, we just are, one awesome we are overselling it's, that in the name it's so offensive because this same rule used to be re-rolled a hit which was brilliant with his with his high high value attacks um but yeah no that's that's a no that's a big no that's a big no uh and then shadow master um mm-hmm. He, uh, this general cannot be picked as the target of attacks with missile weapons while they're in one inch of a terrain feature um, not bad, but honestly not needed, usually for reasons we're going to yeah. talk about later. Yeah, it's redundant. Yeah. That's a redundant one. Yes. And then the one you actually take, which is amazing, mm-hmm. uh, and that is Incredible Agility. Well, I this, this one's undersold. <laughs> like, unrivaled killer. <laughs> He's quick. Way overhyping. Incredible Agility okay <laughs> this general can fly first of all that is some very incredible agility i've seen some <laughs> olympic gymnasts who are amazing i don't think they can just fly they don't just get themselves to japan by just walking to the coast and jumping <laughs> so at any rate in addition you can carry out the their finest hour heroic action with this general twice in the same battle instead of once Fantastic. You know that he sounds like an unrivaled uh, killer. Yeah, ex- mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. So yes, giving exactly what you said earlier. You know the fact that this army has basically no flight, and this adds uh, a flight. Uh, usually, what's going to be onto a vermin lord deceiver, um, who is then a very mobile, very high powered mm-hmm. threat, who can also then go into finest hour twice. Um, it's just, it's just great. Like this is great. This is what you want in a command trait. It's great. Uh, that is a good point, House. He said, um, uh, you, they can't unleash on you if you happen to charge them and stay near terrain with the, with the, the Shadow Master, which is true. That is, that is a benefit. I don't know that it's worth picking here. I've got enough chaff. I'll usually just shove ah. something else in first, but sure. Okay. Uh, verminous stuff. We all agree incredible agility is the winner, right? I mean, there's no... Oh, by a mile. It, it's yeah, yeah. it's always a debate between that or plus two attacks. Uh, and if you've got a Grey Seer with Levitate, because they're uh, reliable casters, if you've got a Grey Seer with Levitate, I could see the argument for plus two attacks. But for me, being able to pile in up to six inches um, yeah, with Fly, ones. and then yeah. also only having a one-inch range for your really good weapon, um, it means you probably you, you want the Fly. You want to be able to get into to nooks and crannies. Yep. Yep, Absolutely. Uh, Verminous Valor updated, uh, so it's for, this is, now we're into the Verminous Heroes, gives them the three-up allocation to units, yep. so, okay, again, I guess if you are really concerned about those Claw Lords staying alive or something like that. But the um, Claw Lords pair with Storm Vermin anyway, right? Like, it right. just, there's a, there's a few here that just don't feel necessary given the War Scroll changes. Correct, yeah, because Storm Vermin do this on the other Natively. side. Natively, yeah. Natively, yeah. so you're often going to have them running together and have this by default. Um, I mean, I should say state that you can uh, 
give this to like these are true verminous heroes so you can yep. give this one to a warbringer which is mm -hmm. cool but the warbringer can also be protected by the storm vermin uh savage overlord if a friendly scaving unit within three inches of this general fails a battle shock test you can say they will restore order with savage brutality if you do so that unit has not failed that battle shock test but it suffers d3 mortal wounds see um, great wording it, there yeah you know it's so funny that you like you were complaining about battle shock this dude can give battle shock to anything nearby yeah, if there's any call for a Claw Lord who's using the heroic action to drop into it, it's for this. Like, if you know you're going to get wrecked by something, this can be a great thing to, like, drop into to have a second way to keep yeah. moving it up. So, it's okay. Like, it's... Uh, I don't want to poop on it. It's not bad. And then, uh, finally, Powerful Alpha. The first two wounds or mortal wounds caused to this general in each phase are negated. Cool. Um, yeah, it, pretty strong on a Warbringer, I'll say that. Um, mm -hmm. on a big monster who can who can be relatively tough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything out of there, Sam? Anything out of there making you want to make your the Warbringer your general? Anything out of this lot? Yeah, I think the Warbringer is a sort of character that if, if you're taking it, you're winding him up and you're throwing as many uh, attacking buffs on him as possible to, to utilize his already good combat profile. So uh, even though the durability is nice, ignoring the wounds or passing off the wounds, I think you're always going plus two attacks on him. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, as you say, you're potentially going to use that um, battle shock immunity. But if it's your opponent's turn when you're doing that, you're, you're burning a, um, you're burning your heroic action and there's right. the potential they just kill the character in addition to damaging the units around the character. Yeah, sure. Um, and then you don't get to utilize it anyway. So, yeah, I think uh, ultimately I'm not I'm not taking a verminous general um, in, yeah. in most of my lists. Agreed. Uh, all right, Scryer. Uh, so basically <laughs> this first one, rather than read all this ridiculous text, I'm just going to say... Uh, if you have weapon teams that which you can hide all your weapon teams and you can hide a lot of weapon teams in some units mm -hmm. but if the unit gets wiped they die too if they haven't been revealed yet yeah which matters because of how the timing on how you reveal them as we'll talk about this overseer of destruction means you don't lose them they just pop out and you know there you go so um okay fine i guess i never like throwing good money after bad just just pop your weapon teams when you need to and then you don't need this ability that's that should be the answer um masterful scavenger for your for two bonus warp stone sparks at the start of the game so basically whatever and then deranged inventor the start of your shooting phase you can pick one friendly scryer unit add one to hit rolls for attacks made with missile weapons by that unit until the end of the phase okay cool like a free okay. command play Sure. Yeah. 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 So it that's basically that. you can you can yeah you get a free second all out attack for Scryer shooty units in the shooting phase. So cool. Combines with the spark perfectly fine. Yep. Again, mm -hmm. no, there's no Vermin Lord. There's no real big Scryer heroes either. Although their main dude is certainly tougher than the Molder mm -hmm. <laughs> dude. Mm -hmm. Um. So that's something. Uh. I like I could see the deranged inventor one having some use depending on your particular list. Yep. Um, beyond that, nothing here really moves me. Cool. All right. Finally, Pestilence, Master of Rot and Ruin. Add one to chanting rolls for this general. Didn't we say something about six plus? Okay. Cool. Yeah. I mean, you already have a lot of ways yeah. to get bonuses, but you got to put. Yeah. The, I mean. You, you can put this on a significantly tough body, I would point out. This doesn't have to go I, on the Little Priest. Sure, sure, sure. Like, this could go on a Corruptor. I get that. No, I can, well, he's not a priest. Oh, well, no, he's not a priest. He's not a priest. It can go on the, on the uh, Plague Fox. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is fine. That's perfectly reasonable choice for him. Um, like, plus one a chance is good. I don't know. What else to say? It's fine. <laughs> uh, Architect of Death. Add one to the damage characteristic of missile <laughs> weapons used by friendly Plague Claw units Holy within 18 of this general. Who wrote this? <laughs> this is like, somebody wrote this as a joke and it got in the book. Uh, that is hilarious. Is it a copy uh, and paste reason. from the old battalion, maybe? Is it, so, uh, here's, here's, here's the, uh, here's the problem. They missed, they messed up one role, one word. Okay. 
It should be to the attack characteristic, not <laughs> yes. to the damage. Right, correct. Yeah. Yes. Then I would think about it, because then those things could be useful. But plus, yeah. like, you'll see when we get to the play club, but it's a multi-damage <laughs> weapon. That one is nothing. That's not anything in this case on a single attack. That's so uh, wild. Oh, my God. And then Ridden with Poxes is just like, whatever. It's fine. Really? I love Ridden with Poxes. I love it. It's fine. I love it. It can splash some mortal wounds. It's fine. It's right, so because I'm gonna put it on a, I'm gonna put it on a furnace and then jam that furnace down their throat, and make them deal with it. True. Sure. Right. And it's just and more mortal it's, wounds, which is good. It's just more damage to, to everything within three. Um, yeah, I mean, if I had the furnace, I'd honestly take the the chant thing just so I could start triggering through great plagues even more. Like that's what I want. It's what I want more than the splash mortal wounds. Like I'm gonna get more action out of the great. I'm gonna get more mortal wounds out of the great plagues popping off regularly than I am out of the the this ability. That's the issue. Yeah, I mean maybe like my key is that you're gonna have what, how many bites at the Great Plague Apple? Like let's say if you're running three priests, right? Like and everybody's at plus uh, on on plus two at least. Sure. Uh, let's fire them off. I want one every round guaranteed. I want to never well, not be great plaguing. Well that's what I'm saying. Like if you have that you're on average like you you're gonna roll four a four plus right on one of the three one hopes yeah one hopes like that extra plus one moving that to one of them on a three plus just like that like that to me is not significant you're not moving the needle as opposed to splashing mortals on what two three four units the advantage to me is then i don't have to keep all my priests next to each other because that that, that sure, really restricts sure. them so, Sam, sure. what's your take? Any, what, what's your what's your pick out of this lot? Plus one to chant is is useful. Uh, may maybe Clan Pestilence might be the only clan where you would consider the generic ones. So there's the the potential sure. there for the uh, inbuilt the reroll, the in, inbuilt reroll of chants. Yeah, high priest. Um, or yeah, I think that probably is about it. I don't, yeah, the, the plus one, yeah, that's that's the one I'll probably look at for the, the high priest. But again, Pestilence probably not going to be the general. And because of the way they've changed uh, the, the composition of units, you, you don't need to have like a scryer or you don't need to have a Pestilence right. general anymore. You can take whatever you want and, and right. build a hybrid force. Yeah. Yeah, my only issue with it, the reason I like this as opposed to taking just high priest or whatever is because I can trip into the reroll kind yep. of yeah, on my of course. own. Like I can build myself into the universal command trait. So just, you know, I got to burn a turn doing that, but still. That's probably the turn I wasn't in range to actually mm -hmm. have anybody get hit by a great plague anyways, right? Like turn mm -hmm. one, yeah, turn I cast, one. boom. I'm now I'm now I'm never ending plaguing. We're we're ready for the money and, you know, turn two on. Okay, now let's get some let's drop some great plagues, right? So. Mm -hmm. At any rate. Okay, artifacts. Uh so insanity so much stuff here again like a lot of these actually have use okay um i'm gonna touch on the ones i think i have you that that have some kind of use and and if i miss one then we'll go back to it um noshard no pass skaven brew still amazing <laughs> like better infinitely better every yeah. turn yeah ridiculous ridiculous how good once per turn in your hero phase, you can pick one other friendly Skaven unit within three inches of the bearer. They suffer D3 mortal wounds, but you add one of the attacks characteristic of melee weapons used by that unit until your next hero phase. Incredible. Anything in Skaven, few mortal wounds. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Classic artifact going back. I, I still have my... I picked up the book, by the way, Sam, when I was at Adeptcon. I had lost it. I, I They've had it on the shelf day one. I went up and bought it. I got it for like as cheap as chips, 15 bucks or something. Uh, for the the uh, fifth edition Skaven okay. book, the the multicolored one it was great. Yep. Still had all the like pages with the cards and stuff for the the oh, magic awesome. items and so yeah. It was mm -hmm. great. So, anyways, um, you know that that but that that item has a legacy. Skaven Brew's been around for a while. Um, what Staff was the right sword? What was the sword that did strength ten d six d six damage? The, the uh, Doom Blade. The um, uh, Eben. Um, no, no. 
Because the weeping blades were the small one, and then there was yeah, the bar, weeping yeah. blades, the little one, fell something. The fell uh, blade, yeah, you fell got blade. It. There we go. I got there. Okay, sorry. Uh, sorry, it's my apologies. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I it's want the fell blade back so badly. <laughs> like it was shattered yeah. during the end times. Uh, the mm-hmm. fell blade was make a new one. We made it. We mm-hmm. made people up who were dead. And they came back. Can't make a new yep. sword. Somebody can't go on a mission and retrieve the shards or whatever. You know, find them floating in the nether regions. Okay. Anyways, staff of rightful supremacy. I think could have some play, especially in this, especially in the current world we're talking about, since it's just going to be purple suns and crap all the way down. Uh, subtract one from casting rolls for enemy wizards within thirteen. That's a fine enough thing. It's not going to often. Uh, it's not going to often be relevant, but whatever. The And then, in addition, once per battle in your hero phase, when you attempt to dispel an endless spell, that endless spell is automatically dispelled. You don't make a roll. So you can just shut something off. You do have a lot of bonuses to to cast and unbind and dispel and stuff. But certainly it's still useful to not worry about that and just be like, nah, this purple sun's got to go, sun, right? Or, or whatever. Okay. So, that's okay. Any thoughts so far? Skaven Bruce is a big winner out of, out of this stuff so far. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agree. Uh, skip on the Lash. Rabid Crown. I'm in for this one. I'm in like Flynn for this artifact. This is like my second artifact to pick up all the time. Uh, Clan Molder Hero only. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made by Molder Fighting Beast and pack units wholly within 13 of the bearer. Fantastic. As we'll get to later, they have an, their own built-in plus one to wound they can add. So this gives you plus one to hit and wound effectively. Um, it ha- it applies to both pack and beast units, so e- you know basically everything you'd want. It's great, it's a great item. It's simple plus one to hit is good. So there you go. And then the funny artifact, if you want to try to make your current Molder hero tough, the foul hide. The bearer has a wounds characteristic of ten, so the word you can put an artifact on them to give them the worst wounds characteristic in the game. And in addition, at the start of your hero phase, you can heal one wound allocated to the bearer. Cool. Cool. Uh, it doesn't make them a monster or anything. It just makes them 10 wounds. But so 10 they wounds! Benefit from, it just ten. makes them 10 wounds so they can't benefit from anything. <laughs> yeah, I think you want you want them to be survivable if that plus three to charge matters. If if the sure. you're trying to pair it with the master clan ability, having, the, having twice the wounds and, and healing one per turn... I sort of have had some lists where I've I've had this in, but then ultimately, if if the points allow or hero slots allow, maybe it's just better to have a second pack master. Um, but it's yeah, it's all just going to come down to the the composition of the list. Yep, agreed. Yep, I mean, worst case, you could always just squeeze in some regular pack masters. As stupid as that is, it yeah, is, the unit. Yep, yeah, the actual unit. Like it is doable. You can you can get mm-hmm. that same bonus out of them. So. Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily have to have the hero to get the heart to harvest that bonus. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, the shadow magnet trinket would be cool if it was strike first all the time, but it's just once. I don't really need it. The far skitter cloak would be cool if it lets you teleport all the time. It doesn't. It lets you teleport once, yeah. so I don't really need it. And then we come to the one that I would take and have taken and loved, which is the gnaw bomb. With the new way that gnaw holes work, turning random pieces uh-huh. of terrain into a gnaw hole is wildly good now. <laughs> like, man, that thing is incredible. Uh-huh. Because I, like, you know, I had a game where I needed to recall a bunch of units back to kill a threat that had ended up in my back line, turned a random piece of terrain into... Cause, and he had a unit within three inches of my gnaw hole, but he didn't have anybody within three inches of this piece of terrain. Boom. Gnaw hold it, and I had units all over near other gnaw holes that just, like, joop, joop. Droop, everybody's jumping in and just flooding back back home to the new gnaw bomb and then just poof, explode them. This is great. This is a super wombo combo piece. It's it's optionality, man. Sam, what do you what do you think about uh Eshin stuff? Yeah, this this plays into the grand strategy as well. If we're doing that one, we want to have more units in their deployment zone. Mm-hmm. Um it's very hard for them to to zone out all of the terrain late game. Like maybe early game when you've got a full army, sure, but once there's been a bit of trading, I think that the the Nor bomb could could pick you up the the grand strap points almost every game. Uh, I love the the shadow magnet trinket because it enables you to do things with your vermin lord, um, like put him in front of their army uh, outside of nine, so they can't shoot at him. 
once they've done their movement, maybe they need to make some long charges to get in. You then activate it and then retreat with him before they've had an opportunity right. to activate. Like the, the sequencing stuff is really important in this book. And there's a lot of stuff like, for instance, it might be their turn and you want to proc the master clan pile in. So by using the fight first, he piles in and attacks and then the rest of your army piles in in their turn before they've had an opportunity to do anything. And that can be really significant. Uh, I think this. I think it plays into the Johnny, the Johnny element of um, Skaven really well, but equally so does the the Norbomb, uh, and the, the Norbomb creates that really interesting um, question or interaction of mechanics where you can have models yeah. stuck in impassable, um, frozen there. I don't know how that. I don't know how that plays out. Or maybe that's an ask your ask your to one. But on the the face of it, rules is written. I would say that they are incapable of moving. Yeah, they get turned to stone when you knob yep, on them. They fall in the so. hole. They're swimming so. in the pool for a little while, apparently, until it until it, the effect goes away. So, yep. Uh, it's, just, it, it's a clipping issue. Yeah, they yeah they ID clip right through the <laughs> right through the uh, right through the terrain. Oh, no. uh, so yes, ask your TO on that one. I I know already that's on the FAQ list of like, hey, how does this work? So. Mm-hmm uh please tell us because yes you just you just you made people stand on impassable terrain which theoretically they can't move over so what now so what do we do now (laughs) okay verminous uh which i actually like basically all the verminous artifacts i think they could have uses which is unusual um, I'm glad to see we called back to two classic pieces of vermin mm-hmm. or of, of, of artifact gear here. Yeah, the shield of distraction, baby. Uh, so the bearer cannot be picked as the target of a combat attack by more than one unit per phase. You can't see it there because it's kind of it's very faint text, but it actually says "suck it, Tom's very particular night haunt list." Uh, where he wants to come attack you with like five juiced heroes, and it's like, well, I don't know, one of them get to swing, I guess. Pick the one. The rest of them, I guess, Weird. just stand still. So we'll basically, see how many people take that down. artifact. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. Uh, like I don't I don't hate it. Uh, Rust cursed armor. Add one to save rolls for attacks target the bearer. So first of all, you've already got me. I like where we're at already. I'm happy with this so far. Plus one to save is good. <laughs> okay. And then, in addition, you get a wacky ability that you'll use fail on the vast majority of the time, but will sometimes kill an artifact, and that will be fun. It doesn't matter. You took it for the plus one to save, so it's always useful. Um, and then sometimes it'll eat other people's artifacts, which is kind of a neat fringe benefit. And then finally, I mean, the, the oh boy, so good. Uh, the Warpstone Charm, uh, subtract one from save rolls for enemy units within enemy units within three inches of the bearer at the start of your hero phase roll a die on a one the bearer suffers d3 mortal wounds this is what we call verminous in the front uh purple sun in the back we don't have saves so you don't get saves either (laughs) okay uh great that that kickback of slightly having a chance to wound yourself could be i could not care less yeah Mm -hmm. whatever this pairs so perfectly on the warbringer because he just he just goes and messes people up with this, um, yeah, love it, love it. Maybe obvious, a obviously, obviously, or unleashing the purple sun behind him, and then he comes up this way. I was thinking all your lists start with Festus as well, <laughs> <laughs> Festus and portals, and suddenly they're at minus three. Um, yeah, and then in come the plague monks. So I mean, yeah, absolutely. I yeah, I like all these. I mean, Sam, what's your take on on this crop? I think Warpstone Charm stands apart, but they could all have some use. Yeah, Warpstone Charm is excellent, and it's the sort of thing you can build a list around because you have a high-volume, low-rend army. So mm-hmm. that that's a mm-hmm. really nice synergy for the way the book plays, and it also just pushes your Vermin Lords that that slight level up. You know, in the age of save stacking, um, it cancels out their, their all-out defense or it cancels out their Mystic Shield, and then you're using your native Rend 2 or Rend 3, which is great. Uh, and the... Um, just with the bravery one briefly, you've got an inbuilt minus one to bravery on your war scroll. You're you're terrifying if you're a vermin lord, so it's sort of two d six plus one to to beat the bravery, which is marginally better. Yep. Cool. Good stuff. Uh, esoteric warp resonator does what it always did. You get an extra spark. 
at the start of each battle round. So cool. I don't. It's I've cool. never really found it to be that necessary. You generally have enough sparks to spark what you need to spark. But if you're if you find yourself low, hey, there it is. Um, Vial of the Fulminator still around um, for those psychopaths like myself who have four Doom Wheels and want to run the Doom Wheel thing and uh, double their move characteristics. So those guys are just zooming all over the board, causing mortal wounds. So fun times for that. It's it's obviously just the the meme list. Uh, and then the interesting one. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Speaking in, speaking of getting into weird artifacts that are Johnny Time extravaganzas. Mm-hmm. The Brass Orb. Boy, did this change. Once per battle, at the start of your hero phase, so it's at the start, this is all very relevant. Again, the sequencing thing, like you mentioned, Sam, right? You can pick one enemy unit within six inches of the barrel and roll a die. On a three plus, remove that unit from the battlefield. They're gone now. At the end of that turn, your opponent must set up that unit again on the battlefield, wholly within their territory, and more than nine inches from all enemy units. Now, well, so, there is sorry, a, Shadow Queen. Yeah, <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> uh, Stuart wanted 20 minutes of discussion on this. That will not happen. There is a goofy sort of wombo combo thing here, obviously, with banishing half of Marathi and then just plowing into the other half of Marathi who does not have, who can no longer transfer her wounds since her counterpart is, you know, error 404 not found at the moment. And then she just dies. You just kill her. Okay. Once she's okay. removed, the other one can't come back. It's- well, how about, how about this? I mean, sure. That's not where my head went. Sure. I'm just going to zone them out so they can't actually put the model back on the table. Yes, the brass orb is super cool because it's just fascinating. If you you could potentially block them out from putting it back on the table with some, especially in some of the smaller deployment zones, um, yeah. it could also just mean for very slow moving units that they just don't really actually participate in the fight that much anymore, depending right. on where your models right. are. So, Sam, what do you think? Brass orb yeah, is it a winner? Well, it's it's hard to execute. So the rules are really strong, but it's going on a a squishy character and it's at the start of your, it's at the start of your hero phase. So this is a play for a double, um, this is a play for a double strategy. And um, that means it's really low probability of going off. Um, But if it does go off, it's brilliant. I I like getting rid of Gotrek is so slow. (laughs) Getting rid of... um, (laughs) getting rid of archaeon like there's there's a whole heap of um a whole heap of plays with this and i think to I mean, tom's point it, it's relatively easy to zone with this army with however many teleports yeah uh, and double pile-ins you can actually utilize the double pile-in to like swing the vermin lord's massive base around and cover a big nine inch circle right. around him like there's there's a heap of stuff that you can um, play into it and if it's your strategy um, it's an out. It's not the only out. Like you don't build your army around getting the brass orb off once and removing one unit, but um, it's just a, an additional thing that you can draw down on over the course of the game. Well, yeah. like Bellacore is strong, mm-hmm. right? This is a very short range, functionally removed from whatever, right? Yeah. But you're not... Again, it is very battle plan dependent, right? Because It is battle plan dependent. Yeah. The territories um, it, and what their territory is matters a lot. If it's one of the, if it's that goofball awful scenario that looks like this, where the red know. and the blue are just meeting in in the middle, they're they're going to have a lot more optionality of where they set back up than if you're in the one with <laughs> with this tiny sure. rectangle. Sure. So, and then finally, pestilence. Uh, yeah, there's some good stuff here. The blade of corruption. Pick one of your bearer's melee weapons. If the unmodified wound roll for that weapon is a six, that weapon has a rend characteristic of neg three and a damage characteristic of six for that attack. Hello. <laughs> that, that escalated quickly. <laughs> uh, I mean, that obviously that has corruptor re- written all over it. Oh, God, yes. Yes, 100%. Uh, so that's great. Uh, the Fumigatus skip. And Ballistivus, the Living Cyst, uh... If you like strike first effects, yo dog, I heard you. Li- I heard you like strike first effects. Depending on what you've got going, it has to jump around. 
still right. like the that hilarious interaction but you can obviously control that depending on how many heroes you happen to have or what they're doing or it whatever. just means in every other turn it's on your furnace <laughs> sure like it just depends like if you if you uh, if you only had the Corruptor, well, then you're taking the Blade of Corruption. But if you happen to have two Corruptors, maybe you give the second one the Living Cyst, and you wait, and you get real excited for the turn it jumps yeah. over because you get to the to the guy who also has the Blade of Corruption. That's going to be a real yeah. winning turn for that dude. Yep. So, or just a little Plague Priest who's like got it for no reason, and then he just hands it off in round two, so or whatever. Yeah, Sam, what's your thoughts? Man, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so so cool. So you can go the um the blade of corruption, then plus two attacks from your uh command trait, and then plus one attack from a prayer, and then plus one attack from the Skaven Brew. So you can get him up to two D six plus four. Um, which just sixteen attacks with that weapon would be wild. Uh, and then there is easy for him to get plus one to hit and wound as well. So mm-hmm. um that's really nice. And yeah, I I I've mentioned numerous times already struck first is brilliant just as a generic rule but in this specific army it's it's even more impactful so uh, i I really like these ones you just yeah you've sort of pushed into double command entourage or double warlord um with with this army you you really want the additional enhancements they're just so valuable yep i didn't say it at the beginning but i have not built one of these lists yet where i cared at all about unified i was like no 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 Nah, we're st- this, this you're your, all the your chaff and mobility. Yeah, your yeah. chaff and mobility mean you love being high drop. You you show them nothing. You've got six rats on the board or something, right, and then right. yeah, and then you're getting all these other benefits, and you, you're happy going first or second because of your reach. Um, yeah, yeah, and you can also keep a lot of your army off board, so it oh, could yeah. be that like the by the time army. they're yeah, yes, you can null deploy with this army. Yep. Um, but it could very well be that you just sort of like. Even in like, even if that's not your strat, if you're not going full null deploy, it could be yeah. very reasonable that by the time they're done dropping, you have not put anything on the board, mm-hmm. and so your entire mm-hmm. setup is just deployment that is completely reactionary to everything they've done, right? And you've just yeah. got like gutter runners and crap like that, just off in reserves, ready to ready to go party. Um, so it's a it's a winner, uh, absolutely. Just a million drops, all the drops, which I love. Like I love not having to worry about battle reg at all. I'm like, nah, I want all the toys. All the toys. Okay. Spell lures. Somehow the uh, the Grey Seers need to hit the books again. Uh, they just really need to hit up the... They, they haven't been studying hard because now they're down to three spells. <laughs> so I don't know where the rest of them went. The big guys still know other versions, but they're like, nah, don't remember those. Shame for them. Scorch, which is bad. Skitter Leap, which is amazing. And Death Frenzy, which is very useful. And... There um. We go. And our, oh, not there we go, our friend in the formatting department forgot a line. So it just says Grace here only. It doesn't say including unique. So old mate Thankful's forgotten these <laughs> until mm-hmm. they fix it. Yep. Which is um, a little bit frustrating. <laughs> it's super frustrating. Um, I'm, I'm sure it gets eroded, right? Because it has yeah. been everywhere else, but it's just, yeah. Yes. Uh, Every other unique heroes that are of the appropriate type can always take mm-hmm. the lore specific spells. In fact, mm-hmm. often I would point out they just know the entire lore. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Lore master of it. Yeah. But we get neither of those things. Not only does Tank will not know the whole lore, which he should, he should just have the ability that says he knows all three of these spells. Like, who mm-hmm. cares? Well, Tank what's he knows getting like there? 20 spells. <laughs> He's, he's, he's choosing between Skitter Leap or Death Friends every game. So all you're doing effectively is giving him both. Yep. Um, which he which he can then do if you take the the trait anyway you wouldn't because the the enhancements are so good, um, and just with the with the death frenzy we've we've retained our language which I thought some of these things might get cleaned up but it's until your next hero phase if any models in that unit are slain so no mention of how they're slain. Um, yeah, yeah. Which means you can proc this Shoot yourself in. with your Skaven Brew, give yourself extra attacks, and then and then prod away. It means that you can be shot and you can kill things when you're shot. Uh, there's there's a whole host of interactions where that becomes meaningful. Uh, and I've had situations where I've used Death Frenzy um, and been able to kill a screen that I'm in combat with, and it's just it's brilliant. You know those situations where you've got a hero on one wound left that you're fighting against or whatever, and it's uh yeah, there's there's ways you can proc it yourself, which is quite nice. Yep. Yep, it's pretty great. Uh, so, um, 
Like, yeah, it's, it's good. Death Frenzy, I'm, I'm amazed it still works like it does, and I'm happy it still works <laughs> like it does, so <laughs> good stuff. Uh, lore of Warp Volt Galvanism. So, uh, surprisingly, we've done nothing to fix the uh, horrible imbalance in this lore. Like, this is the most phoned-in lore. Uh, what we did is we took more and more Warp Power and said it's still the best, it just works different now. Now it's plus one to hit mm-hmm. Wound instead of reroll. Fine. Fine. Sure. I'll take it. It's fine. Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool beans. Still does the same Bang. thing. In the context of this army and the way that my lists are being built, Chain Warp Lightning might be the worst spell in the game. The casting value is 7, right? And it hits all of your units within 13. I've usually got like 10 units around my heroes. Yeah. it. I think (laughs) it is... 10 mortal wounds to my own army. Uh Uh-huh. I mean, I'll take this in Slanesh all day. Where's where's this spell in Slanesh? (laughs) They're looking for this spell. Well, the right answer here, by the way, is actually to do a doubles event with Slanesh Skaven. Yeah. Uh, Wait, I, I mentioned earlier the 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 horrific combination of these two things. So it's a shame they need to buddy up in the lore. That way we can have some some Skaven allies over in Slanesh Town. And well, I already know what uh, I already know what your warlord is going to be. You can print them. Yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Uh, all right. So, yeah, it's still more more war power. Fine, dandy. Yep. Great. Hundred yep. percent. And then prayer scriptures. Um, I mean, like legitimately all of these are good (laughs) yeah you have a five up horde killer you have a plus one to wound rolls uh buff and you have a plus one to attacks buff yes please like Mm -hmm. yep Yep. (laughs) these are all things i wanted to do on an answer value of three it's great good sam yeah, you're potentially wanting to take an additional prayer so you can still take heal and so you can still take curse because the, these, like, all of these, you just want optionality, right? Or maybe you want yeah. filth, filth, filth and rabbit, rabbit on the same guy so you can choose which buff is it that he needs to be putting out this particular turn. Um, these, are, these are so good. Yeah. <laughs> like, particularly when um, you look at the way you can stack buffs on sensor bearers. Uh, these are, yeah, I'm sure we'll get to shortly. These are yeah. insanely powerful. Oh, we will. I would also point out, by the way, that these have a 13-inch range, but it's not wholly within. Mm-hmm. It's just within. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you only need to tail to, to drop this prayer on somebody, which is amazing. And again, this is it, this is the that's the kind of little detail. Like the thing that happened with Death Frenzy, the thing that the lore of Warp Volt, when I was referencing at the beginning that it doesn't feel like it got the full amount of like love and attention. Oh. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Right. Right? Like, it's just, right. there's weird things like this that just don't feel like how every other t- battle tome is written. Well, it's not a third edition battle tome. Like, those are not third edition, like, rules writing. Yeah, there's just some weird choices. So, hey, I look, I'm not going to complain. Cool, for now I can just tag one the corner of one dude's little base and drop it on the whole unit. So, thanks, I guess. Checks out. Uh, and now we jump straight to War Scrolls. Uh, you might have guessed that there was a page that was dedicated to... Um, grand strats and battle tactics. It's weird when I looked in the book, I uh, I didn't see it. So I guess it must not be there. Uh, I, I guess we don't have to worry about it. No, I mean, obviously they do have it. I'm just choosing to ignore it because I think they should be banned from tournaments. So that's my stance. Why um why did we not get our own battalions? Four battalions. Yeah, there's no, yeah. there is truly no no battalions in this. That, that is why not, not though? Like, because that's that, that, that was an opportunity where we could have, yeah, again. Anyway. Same story again, yep. right? Like, just yep. there's yep. things missing. Yes, we have no no specific battalions. Which, by the way, I could have written 10 additional core mm-hmm. battalions now, because mm-hmm. there's so many classic That's conceptions where I, yeah. of these, these battalions and these pairings. Whatever. I, I don't know. It's a great question. <laughs> it's because this book didn't get the same level of love and attention. So, Okay. Thankful on Bone Ripper. Big... Daddy Thankful, 14 wounds, 4 up save, 5 up ward. Uh, Things that are relevant about him. His power behind the throne got so much better, I don't know if there is an ability in any book that has that is that, that wins the MVP award more than this. Because the old version of this was terrible, the new version of this is amazing. 
Once per battle round, this unit can issue the same command up to two times in the same phase. If it does so, each command must be received by a friendly Skaven unit. No command point is spent the second time this unit issues that command. Fantastic. You want, like, this is actually a fairly command heavy army. Like, a lot mm -hmm. of people retain mm -hmm. command abilities. You're pretty hungry for command points. So, uh, yeah, great. Good, good stuff. Staff of the Horned Rat got a glow up. Starts at plus three to cast now on his new mm -hmm. wound chart. That's amazing. Uh, this dude's a powerhouse caster because he's like starting at Nagash and can stand near a a, 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 a yeah, yeah hole and suddenly be plus four. Wonderful. Um, so that's great. Uh, his war with the reroll now, doesn't it? So it it used to be you could use the plus or the reroll. It was an or now it's a both. So oh, you mean for the warp stone addiction, the three yeah. Six yeah, yeah, the way I read it, this is going to need another FAQ because they did change the wording here, okay? And mm -hmm. I, I agree with your reading. I think they're allowing you to carry the bonus over to the 3D6 to, to effectively what you end up casting there, but w w let me hit it in a second. Yeah, sure, sorry. No, no, you're good. You're good, man. It's all good. Because it's you're right, it is very relevant. It leads right to that ability. It used to be that he healed in the hero phase. Now, at the end of the combat phase, you heal D3 wounds, which is amazing because it doubled his healing. Yeah. Because it's at both combat phases, which is wonderful. His braziers and, pro and projectors still work the same. So it's still like <laughs> horde units die to mortal wounds and or hard punches, which is cool. And yeah, so warp stone addiction. Can this actually work now? Uh with the oh, that's weird huh okay that's weird hold on a second my my i watched the comments in two places and one of them it stopped showing me the comments on there we go now it's caught up so i wasn't seeing all your wonderful comments uh okay here we go so the way warpstone addiction works is once per turn you can attempt when you attempt to cast a spell you can consume a warpstone token and roll 3d6 um this roll cannot be re-rolled or modified mm -hmm. that specific 3d6 roll which makes sense because if it's a 13 then the spell is successfully cast and cannot be unbound however he takes d6 mortal wounds okay which he does still get his own save against which is cool they didn't add like the um the and, and cannot be negated or something which sometimes mm -hmm. does show up in this book <laughs> um and then if the 3d6 roll is not a 13, remove one dice of your choice and use the remaining 2d6 as the casting roll. Now, because that doesn't have the unmodified clause, it's only that initial 3d6. Yeah, mm -hmm. my read is once per round, this dude can go 3d6 plus 3. Or, you know, 3d6. It's not 3d6 plus 3. It's 3d6. Take the two you want. That's where you are. Plus 3. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Which is cool. That's a... Again, this dude just becomes a monster caster mm -hmm. um, for his two spells. So, like, this dude can drop that purple sun. Like, it's hot. Like, no doubt he's rolling that bad boy out. So, cool. Good. Uh, and Madness is still terrible. Great. Next. <laughs> the worst, yeah. <laughs> How... <laughs> A shocking spell. <laughs> it is shockingly bad. Uh, wow. I mean, just like... It's, he was just, this dude's crushing it, right? With every one of his rules, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we get to Madison, I'm like, oh, this is still the same crap spell. Okay, cool, I guess. I guess we just didn't feel like the, you know, great gray seer needed a spell worth casting. Listen, GW, I don't know if you think this is ever used in a game, but this spell is worthless. Like, straight up. Worth less. Worthless. You have to see that. Three inch range and a hero only target. Like, guys, how many gates does a spell need to get behind? Okay, it also casts on eight, which isn't so hard for him. Because it, why is it so bad? Because it doesn't do anything. It, like your best case here is you pick somebody who has a lot of attacks, and then you get some mortal wounds. Uh, Thankful is four hundred and fifteen points. And worth it. He's not really. He's he's four hundred and forty five points because he comes. It's thankful <laughs> on Bone Ripper on boat. Choo choo. <laughs> yeah. So so let's just talk about launching the Soul Seeker here, shall we? I mean, this yep. is where we talk about launching. Sam, walk us through why launching is this guy's best friend. Why this dude just might as well come with the boat. Many many moons ago, Thankful came on an appropriately sized base. 
uh, and then he was subsequently reboxed for an unknown reason. I think they changed the Warhammer branding, and the new box came with a skateboard. So he's on this small, thin base, despite being uh, a, a rat riding a, a far larger rat. And that that base just fits in to Thankful's, uh, not Thankful, to Launchen's, uh footprint. So he's got this little three-inch circle around him, or three-inch oval around him. And what it means is that Thankful can now move at the end of the hero phase, n- noting we've just said- inches. Yeah, 18 inches, uh, move at the end of the hero phase, and then subsequently move in the movement phase. So he's 18 plus eight, and then he's got these eight inch warp fire projectors. W- what it means is that he, if anyone has um, a, a large uh, impactful unit, like maybe 30 Sentinels, um, he, he, <laughs> he effectively nukes the they whole They don't anymore. Out, right? he, you know, like 30 blade geists. I know 30 blade geists is a thing. Um, like there, there is a number of situations where, where that is insane. And the previous limitation for Thankwell was that it is just the eight inches and then his move depreciates, you know, it starts at 10, but it drops all the way down to seven. So um, the the range was one of the limitations and th- this just removes that. And it also can just get him into positions where he's able to more effectively utilize the double command ability. Uh, he's able to cast some of the the other spells. So it's There's a whole heap of reasons that it's, it's really, really impactful. Even just moving him in, and then knowing in the subsequent turn, you're going to be um, 3D6. Let's say you've you've near a um a Norhall three d six plus four three d six plus five potentially with some arcane um to cast your swords as well. So I think um yeah I think he's an obvious that that's an obvious power pair the the two of those guys. Yeah, it, it's it is wild. Yes, like they can have their sentinels because keep in mind you actually can get obviously you can get a little more than eighteen inches out of movement because he has to be set up. Yeah, can, of course. Yep. Blah yep. blah blah. So of course you're going to get like about twenty ish out of it, and. So you just, this dude walks forward, he floats, he boats forward, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? He takes a mortal wound he's got a five up against, and even if he takes it, who cares? Because he's going to heal D3 in the combat phase, right? And then he's going to just walk his 10-inch movement up to three inches away from some sentinels or some unit, some horde unit, and just be like, you're all dead. Bye-bye. <laughs> you're dead. Like, you're dead now. Go away. If you build this guy with, like, two, three warp fire projectors, basically no horde in the game survives that. Um, it, cause it is just a, a, an insane amount of mortal wounds, right? Cause you're rolling everybody on the unit four up times X number of projectors, right? So you basically just lift the unit almost instantaneously. Um, even on an underwhelming roll, um, even if they have mortal wound protection, like even plague mm-hmm. bearers will just, they're gone. If you've got like three warp fire projectors, they're not going to withstand that. Yeah. And he's he's working around their minus one to hit as well. So you know the plague bearer is natively a minus one tip from shooting. This is an ability he doesn't care, or it doesn't use the attack sequence. Rather, he doesn't care. So um, yeah, awesome, just awesome. Yep. So he just saunters in. The I mean, obviously the other trick with launch, like yes, you can use him like that aggressively. As you mentioned, he could also be super sneaky, right? He yep. could like launch it up, walk to the perfect position, or walk to the perfect position near a null hole unleash a, a purple sun and then just bloop, <laughs> in the movement and phase he could just yeah, pull himself teleport away and started yeah. very good and all while fulfilling the master clan quota that we're looking for as we're building our army we're saying yes. what can we do to hit three master clan heroes um he's ticking a lot of boxes yes yeah thankful is at 415 they did it they made him worth it which i'm so excited about i've always loved thankful um, so I was, I was actually thrilled to see, oh yeah, this guy's actually like, he's not in every list. He's not an auto include, not even close, but he's good. Like you can have lists where this dude is functional and good. And like, he has a use. It's great. It's the perfect way I want to see special characters work. Like where he doesn't feel automatic and I don't feel bad for not taking him in lists, but I feel like I can put him in a list and have him draw the value equal to his points. It's great. A plus work on Thank One Bone Ripper uh, mm-hmm. makes me want to buy a second one, or uh, and or I guess I suppose I could just repaint mine. But where would the fun in that be? Um, all right, Screech. Eee. Let's talk. Let's set up some Vermin Lord stuff here. The Vermin Lords are all thirteen wounds, four up save, ten bravery, basically twelve inch move, ten eight six, yada yada. Updated wound chart. They're all double cast wizards, double double up double casters, double unbinders. They all have a five-up ward. 
They, um, for the most part, ha all have a command ability that is plus one to hit and wound of a particular type of Skaven, like the, the yep. one that aligns with them for the most part. We'll, we'll talk about it. But this guy is just Skaven unit when it fights in the combat phase. It is a combat phase command ability for plus one to hit and wound. So it's just, they all just come with like better all out attack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is again weird that every the, the, like we've been stripping command abilities out of books, and yet all the vermin lords kept a command ability, and it's just sort of a improved all out attack, which is weird, but it is what it is. Um, and the doom glaive is now basically across the line uh, when you because most of them obviously carry the glaives. Um, six attacks, threes and threes, neg two two. There's a little bit of, there is variance on that, which we'll talk about where it comes up. And then obviously this dude also has the Plague Reaper offhand, which he just gets to make a flat eight attacks with, which is funny because he gets more attacks on average than the unwounded Corruptor who has two of them. <laughs> like somebody maybe doesn't know st statistics, I guess, <laughs> of what the average on 2d6 is. He's the king. He's the king. It's it's fine. He's better with one. He's just he's really working it uh -huh. with that Reaper. <laughs> uh, okay. And... The uh, and so you know, this dude makes like a lot of attacks legitimately, and he obviously each round he can drop into one of his 13 headed ones knowledge things, which can give him various mm -hmm. bonuses. So, um, and he still has a good spell, dreaded 13, fun spell, um, does a you know, good number of mortal wounds. And if you kill a unit, you get little clan rats, so it's cool. You don't have to kill the unit, you just have to do mortal wounds, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you think? Screech is 425, which puts him as, like, you know, up there. <laughs> yeah, your... he's he's had a big glow up. He's very good. So he's increased the rent on the Doomclave, increased the damage, um, moved from a D3, which, I don't know. I don't know what the maths is, but for me, D3 average is one. Um, yeah. Like, 99 times out of 100. Yep. And then um, stuff like being Ren 3, Damage 3, the, the turn that he uses the Glaive, the Glaive being 3-inch range. Um, I know it always was, but just really significant. And the, the thing that also he see in lists, despite being a lot better than he was, um, it is that the access to enhancement that mm. the other Vermin Lords have um, yep. pushes them pushes them over the line against him. So for the other Vermin Lords, you're paying, you're paying fewer points and you're getting the opportunity to customize through your trait and artifact, whereas he's got the utility built into his ever-changing um, knowledge, whichever knowledge he's using. So I think, yes, Screech is unfortunate that just the the enhancements we went through in this are so significant that you, you just wouldn't take him over one of the, um, the unnamed Vermin Lords. Yeah. My, I agree with Stuart here. He's he, Stuart said the man who lives inside a bell. Yes, if you're ever taking a screaming bell and you crack it to summon, it's like, and welcome Lord Screech Vermin King, who has turned out to be in there the whole time. Like this is absolutely who pops out of that bell. So, yep. Uh, other than that, he he hasn't made his way into any of my lists. I'll say. Now I don't think he's bad. Nope, I think he neither. could have a list with him. But the problem is, if I'm gonna use something that's like exactly where he is and what I want out of him, I end up usually taking Thankwool. Um, and then otherwise, I'm using a Vermin Lord for a specific purpose and getting the cheaper ones. Uh, the Deceiver at four oh five bargain basement prices. Obviously, he has his little his little punchy stabby dagger instead of the glaive. Uh, still makes six attacks, threes, twos. Um, which he sticks with for quite a while. Uh, neg 3 rend, 2 damage base. Uh, pretty cool. Um, he has his Doom Star, which is still D6 attacks, which is stupid. Uh, that can't just be a number, <laughs> but sure. Um, it does 2 mortal wounds if you hit on it now, so that's cool. Um, it is funny that this guy is obviously an Eshin hero. It's funny that all the other Eshin heroes figured out Eshin Toxin. Even the little Night Runners have Eshin Toxin. No, they're, not, they're not sharing the supply with the boss. This guy did not figure out that he should dip his weapons in poison, which is funny to me. Um, and, yeah, I mean, he has the plus one to hit and wound for Eshin units. The big, big... And he obviously has Dreaded Skitter Leap still, which is still amazing, casting value of six. And you can set up... It's a teleport that lets you set up six inches away. The His Shrouded in Darkness ability, again, so good now. Um, he gets Mirror Shield. Can't be picked as the target of a shooting attack unless the attacking model's within nine inches. 
Fantastic. Fantastic. 405, love this guy, makes it into a lot of lists. Tom, what do you think of the Deceiver? Yeah, I still like him. It's funny, but I look at this and I, I don't know that I would ever take him. Wow. Like, he's good. He's good. Don't get me wrong. He's mm -hmm. good. But if I'm spending 405, like, there's other things I'm going to be spending those points on. Well, I don't know. The 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 fact that I know he can't be picked off combined with the fact that he's such a wombo combo enabler with dreaded skitter leap. Sure. Like literally sure. I'm usually taking him for those two things. Cuz he's super survivable unlike the rest of everything else in this game cuz I can yep. I can just keep him wherever I need to be and he's not going to get shot. And that dreaded skitter leap sets up so many combos. Like I'll, I'll we're going to do some lists at the end and I have lists specifically keying off of this and the wackiness you can achieve with this. But yeah, I just like I'm not going to rely on dreaded skitter leap because we live in a world with wizards like Thanquil and Teclas and Zeech. All yeah, sure. Each. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I mean, I'll back corner um, his, his butt for that. <laughs> sure. And like, like if I'm going to spend 800 points on two heroes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm going to yeah, if sure. I'm going to invest in two two big heroes, yep. he's not in my top two. Wow. Okay. Okay. So Sam? it's going to be thankful on the Warbringer. Okay. I see. And I, or I can Corruptor see that, some, or, yeah. and or Corruptor somewhere. Like, sure. you know, if I'm doing a, a, a Pestilence Epic. Sure. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Like, I, I think those are also perfectly viable lists. So I do not disagree with what with that point. Yeah. Sam, what about you? Yeah, I think Tom's just hit on the the core issue when, when building lists in this book. Uh, and that's with, with sort of spoilt for choice in terms of the viable options and then you've got to determine which is the one that that's going to be the best for the particular list that i'm trying to run so for me um always running a lot of eshin units uh wanting wanting to get the uh, the eshin buffs in there I, I i'm always taking a deceiver like it's it, it's probably the first the first model i'm picking um but that is more about the style of lists that I'm I'm wanting to play, and it, it leaning into that really heavily, and, and also the, building the change. Lists. Yeah, that's right, absolutely. The the change yeah. from um, last GHB to this, uh, I'm no longer ceding a point for being a monster. I'm no longer yeah. slay the warlord or bring it down. Um, that all of those changes for me are inc inc make it incrementally better as well, just compared to what I was playing. And simple stuff like having the the totem. Um, We'll get to it later. The, the units that I needed the totem for are now elite anyway. But yeah, simple stuff like having the totem is also nice. There's lots of nice little yeah, buffs yeah. there. But yeah, the the deceiver the deceiver to me is is an auto included something I've played with a lot and really, um I really value. Right on. Yeah, I should mention yes, all of these guys are totems now, which is actually pretty cool because they're not always your general. There's oftentimes reasons to have you know a couple of these or have other generals. And so it's nice that they can all just project that command ability since they all have their own unique command abilities. Giving them all an 18-inch bubble is actually pretty good. So, uh, Stuart said all the vermin lords are fighting over a singular match to light their weapons on fire. This is not wrong. Flaming weapon is the pick. It's like, yep, there you go. Okay, Corruptor. Uh, so the Corruptor is a lot like the rest of these guys. He has a lot of same thing. His Plague Reapers, if his hit roll is a 6, it causes a mortal wound in addition. He now makes 2d6 attacks with his Plague Reapers on 3s, 3s, neg 2, 2, which is a good attack profile. It's like, as we said, if you are gonna, if you really want to lean into it, though, with like the Blade of Corruption and all that, it's worth mitigating it with some of those other attack bonuses. So you're putting him at like 2d6 plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, where all of a sudden you're like, really putting out a volume of scary scary attacks and this dude does have lots of options to also put those onto like um twos and twos by the way so he can be twos and twos neg two potentially three damage if he flaming weapons and then he's got the the uh choppy choppy sword uh that whenever he rolls a six to six to hit it's a mortal wound and a six to wound it's neg three rend and six damage like it it can be a lot like this dude is is this dude is somebody you can pile on. That said, I'm inclined to not take him at all. Okay. Even wanting to do pestilence. Wow. Okay. Because he so. brackets so hard. 
Yeah, his attack profile goes into the toilet. <laughs> so when was the last time you saw a 400 point, 360 point monster who had a D3 attacks? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, he, he brackets hard. You're not wrong. Like, like he gets there and he's like, hey, um, not Celeste. What's her name? Um, hey, Shalaxi, hold my beer. You know, like. <laughs> uh, you better have a priest backing him up who takes uh, the heel universal prayer and then right i mean you have to you have to between that like, and, his, I just, and then heroic actions to just keep him healed because he has bravery 10 so he's relatively easy to self-heal yeah yes, i just he brackets hard he just brackets so hard and so for me like if i'm gonna invest 300 plus points into something uh, it, i'm not gonna do it where it's gonna bracket that hard okay right. it has to be more reliable than that sam what's your feeling on the corruptor it, yeah, in a vacuum with the the appropriate buffs, he's amazing. But then you work out the opportunity cost is you've lost your artifact and you've had to make him your general and you've actually paid 200 points for support characters to 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 keep him buffed up. So he ends up coming in at like a 600-point package uh, that also eats into the other things you want your army to be doing. So I just I, I don't see I don't see a world where he's better than either the Deceiver or the Warbringer. Um at, at going and chopping things up, I bring more people than he does. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I look at it, I just, I don't see a better package than Thankful and the Warbringer. I mean, I will say though, he is priced to move at 360, which I appreciate. He is the cheapest one. Sure. Sure. Cool. Like, but again, those two kings of the, of their respective worlds, right? Um, one in, in the Choppy Chop realm and the other in the Spellcasty Magic Dominance realm. Like, and also Horde Deletion, right? Like, I just, I can't bring anything that's not them if I'm going to do like a two, like a two monster list. Okay. Well, speaking of which, let's talk about the Warbringer, shall we? Clocking in at 395 points. His uh, advantage is, of course, that he has his Spike Fist, uh, to back it up, which is two attacks on twos and twos uh, at base. Neg two rend, three damage. And he still has that if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a spike fist is six, it becomes six damage instead of three. The thing that makes him so good is obviously you can reroll wound rolls for attacks made by this unit while it's within 13 inches of three or more friendly Skaven units, um, which, yeah. he, which he is one of because it doesn't say other friendly Skaven units. Mm -hmm. So you need mm -hmm. two other units around to give him rerolls. And it's just any Skaven, not Verminous which is cool. So right. just, he just, he just needs within, not wholly within. He just needs to have two other units towing near him. And he has reroll wounds, which is amazing on his profile. He has tire in a battle. So he could grant himself plus one to hit and wound or some other verminous unit plus one to hit and wound. That's his thing. And then he has dreaded death frenzy, which is like death frenzy, but D three units. I've put in the average damage table here for him. If you gave him devious adversary, which is sort of the, uh, very reasonable thing for you to give him for plus two attacks to both of his profiles. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's pretty good. Uh, and then basically the Devious Adversary Command Trait, his self-command ability and reroll wounds against a four-up save, he's 16.64 damage. So why that's, are I did not I'm guessing use, I didn't give charm. him other buffs that could have been there. Yeah, like okay. the charm would be the other like low hanging fruit for me. Correct. I didn't. I wanted to keep it very simple, just to show what it is with kind of like him as obvious with the command trait, all automatic stuff, no artifact dedication, no other buffs, and there are many other buffs he could have. <laughs> mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. so yeah. it's only up from here. I wanted to kind of like set a floor of just automatic stuff you could trigger. God, I love this dude. Yeah, he's great. Uh, Sam, what's your take on this dude? This is our um, our equivalent of the Smash King in Neth. Yep. He just goes in and he just he just takes takes what he's fighting off. Um, he, he's amazing. It's a really good, really good war scroll. And like you said, there's so many additional buffs. Um, there's so many additional buffs you could actually put on him, yep. and it it creates a dynamic where there's a threat. Uh, we can support that with Rad Ogre, Storm Vermin, Sensor Bearers. Like, you can have multiple punchy threats in this army now. Um, and I, we, I love... Go ahead. Buffs. That's the, like, 
this this raw damage chart here is is him not stealing from anyone else to, to right. do this. Right. That was the key, right? He wasn't no no other buffs needed to be employed that could have maybe gone somewhere else. But obviously you can and when you do, boy, do things start popping off. Like, this dude drifts well above 20 on a, against a 4-up save pretty darn easily. Um, well, and with with that, like, the Dreaded Death, Death, Death Frenzy, like, one of the things that he does so well that the other Vermin Lords don't is that he synergizes across faction lines. Because even his Dreaded Death Frenzy isn't specific to keywords. To another keyword, like it's right. all scaven. Yeah, yeah, it could just and, be hitting like rat ogre units and stuff like that, which is again super good. Right, or plague monks. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It, it or, also isn't death frenzy; it's dreaded death frenzy, meaning yes. that it can be coupled with death frenzy. You'd be fighting twice on death, which is um fun. So you want to unleash hell on me? That's what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty, Coming in pretty hot. good. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, he's he's great. Love the Warbringer. Love the model. L yeah, he's he's awesome. The Warp Seer, who finds himself in an unusual position now at 370, he's the second cheapest. Um, he does not have the plus one to hit and wound command ability. Um, so that is the thing he lacks. He is Master Clan. He is still a totem and all of this other stuff, and he still has the six Doom Glaive attacks. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um and uh so the um so that's you know super good he counts as two master clan heroes that's his built on war scroll special ability which is fun yeah and for, as mentioned earlier friendly scaven units wholly within 13 inches have a bravery characteristic of 10 he still has his built-in plus one to save from his ball and he can still throw it for d6 mortal wounds and his spell is still amazing so, yep. Okay. Uh, anything to say about the Warp Seer? Sam, what do you think about this dude? Does he ever make it into your lists? He's nice. He's um. He, he's supporting the army effectively with that. That that ten bravery characteristic of ten is is really significant and important and. The ability to um, launch the the orb after you've run is still really useful. So it creates some situations where he's moved twelve, then he can auto run six, and then the the thirteen inches. So you you're, you're able to cover quite a lot of territory with that. Uh, and just the, the save sa save stacking is obviously really valuable, um, particularly when you've got a five up ward in, in addition to that. So I think yeah, he's he's really nice. He's he's he struggles to cast his spell with the eight to cast. Yep. And the the range being halved um is is pretty significant. So it hurts range eighteen is obviously not as good as what it was because you used to be able to be outside of unbind range. Well, it was um, but twenty six. That's, that's obviously before. gone now. Oh, was, 26. Okay. Yeah. It, it had it had the double thirteen thing. So you still were in unbind range. Yeah. Yep. But it was but like twenty six uh, inches okay, is yep. a great starting range, right? Because it meant. You yep. know, people, it was hard to backboard away from or something like that. Yeah, sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas 18, certainly not the same, <laughs> not the same thing. Nope. But it is still a good spell. Um, you know, it depends on what's going on. Again, depending on, like, this guy is interesting because he does fill two out of the three Master Clan slots instantly by just existing, by being a single mm -hmm. hero. Like, he can mm -hmm. free up. I didn't have to take anything to make that happen. And as we mentioned, the, the Bra Bravery 10 thing... Don't undercount it. You have a lot of MSU units, and suddenly being Bravery 10 is... It stops a lot of little people running away. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, like a Gisele gets picked off or something. That's a real nightmare situation, because instantly you could just... Well, there goes the rest of the two. The other two Gisales are just gone. But if this dude happens to be in the vicinity, they're fine. You, you still have two Gisales. So. Cool. Uh, all right. The Gray Seer on Screaming Bell. We talked about this dude back when the box set came out a little bit. Here's the relevant part about this dude. He's 325 now, which is way more expensive than he was in the box set. But he is now a double caster, double unbinder again. He lost that for a month or whatever. He's 
still plus two to cast, or he can switch over and become plus one to chant. So, whatever. Um, he does not get to select a prayer when he trips over into priest. So you're you're smiting or uh, blessing. Those are your two choices. Which, by the way, isn't terrible. Like, I I've, I've flipped him over to bless sometimes uh, in a couple different attempts. Uh, and Peel of Doom sucks now, and I hate it. And if you crack the bell, you can summon a vermin lord. But I would... I just... I'm not taking this guy at 325. At 265, I was okay with him with summoning a Vermin Lord. That feels like a better sort of, I, I don't know what the appropriate price for him is, but it's not 325. The fact that the bell and the furnace still have to be pushed around, that there's not magic that actually just makes <laughs> this stupid thing move. Well, it raises the question of why can Kane chariots move magically? Uh-huh. And not rat chariots. By the way, I would be fine if this thing had like a move of three inches and then it went up to like six when the rats were around it. Sure. Fine. Fine. Sure. Then it could like, but it could still like pile in or charge or do things as it is now. Again, it just can't do anything. Can't move, can't charge, can't pile in, can't do anything if, you're, if your little rats die. And by the way, in the current world of... Bounty hunters, your little rats die. They die hard. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. So it's actually very hard to keep 10 people alive near this thing. Um, So I just hate that this thing is a super magical, you know, nexus point for warp energy stuffed full of warp stone and yet has to sit there like a dum-dum because it doesn't have 10 idiots sitting around it. It just drives me crazy. I've tried this to play this unit so many times. The new bell with a shorter range is really annoying, but it's even worse because it's on the D6. Before, you had a nice curve. You kind of knew what you could expect. Now, mm. it's just like most of the time you get crap you don't need. Or that just doesn't even apply. And and cracking it for a Vermin Lord, the difference between these points and the Vermin Lord's points, I'll just take the Vermin Lord. Mm-hmm. That's the issue. I'm not getting enough out of this dude. So, yeah, it's just a bad unit now. And it's a shame. Uh, and I agree with you, Gareth. It'd be cool if it was 10 wounds worth of Skaven near it. So, like, you could just have two Rat Ogres. Right. right. Cause they'd be enough or a Vermin Lord. Around. Like, the Vermin Lord just Something. one hand pushes yeah, it. Just, he's, got, he's just, like, moving it up like that. Yeah. He grabs it by the top. He's like, don't <laughs> worry, little buddy. I got you. Yeah, something. Anyways. Sam, Check any me. any defense you have for this thing? I mean, have you put no, this guy in any lists? No. Un- unusable. Like, it's just the, the price point is insane. Yeah. Um, this should have gone down in points, not up in points, e- even with the extra, um, the extra spell. So, yep, I think we're, it's it's sad because this is an iconic model in the range. The you know pushing maybe around the, the most iconic spell. model in the range. Yeah, yep. yep, yeah, yep, yeah, and yeah, they I made agree. it bad. So, <laughs> like you have the same chance of buffing yourself, wounds yourself. Uh, it's not good. Yeah. And, and by the way, you, like I said, I mentioned it offhand, but your your spell is also still the same terrible, awful, useless spell that just basically doesn't affect half the armies in the game. Awesome. Great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you just have to ask the question of, like, can you do enough damage to yourself to just get a <laughs> discount Vermin Lord? Like, sure, is, that like what, is that what this thing's function is, is to buy it, is to put a discount Vermin Lord on the table? I would be... Here's the funny thing. If Peel of Doom did nothing except cause D3 mortal wounds to me, I would be more inclined to take this unit. (laughs) If that's all it did. If I just rang it and it hurt me, I would do it. I would be more likely to take this. Well, that's what I'm wondering, right? Because, like, it's too bad because you can't, like, skitter leap and throw this guy into combat. Nope. You can't... um... You can't really null hill reliably and get this guy in. No. Nope. Um, like, you need to find other ways to do damage to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's bad. It's super bad. Clever, cool, cute idea with summoning the Vermin Lord. Uh, and then you overprice the heck out of it because it summons, and that's what happens. Every time you add summoning into this game, you then overprice it. So, mm-hmm. nope. Pass. By the way, this is not my one unplayable unit. It's not. I think this is bad, but I think you can still play it for fun. 
Okay. But this is not my one unplayable unit. Although it is pretty close. I think it's the bottom. Like in the rank of playable things, this yeah, is literally absolutely. my lowest model in the book. Which is a shame because, it, as you said, it's like the most iconic one. And it's, in, it's in a space as well where there's the most competition. It's yeah. you know that you've only got six characters. You're not gonna you're not gonna lose one so that you can take a bell. Agreed. Now we come to a power page. If there ever was one, the Grey Seer and the Arch Warlock, two titans of of Rat Clan, uh, uh, just like foot hero mastery, showing you how to be a foot hero. The Gracier on foot, double caster, double unbinder, can eat his little, uh, can eat his little things. Doesn't insta kill himself anymore. Just takes D three mortals if he rolls the thirteen, but still has the ability to pop and be unbound. Uh, has a decent enough spell. Neg one to hit is and, and mortal wounds is fine. It's fine. Um, it's like you have to roll over their wounds characteristic, which is still an extra stupid gate for no reason. But it's not. It's not as bad as Crack's Call. How about that? Um, at least it can affect flying units. Um, and there are many units in the game, surprisingly, that have a wound roll or a wound characteristic of less than seven. Whereas there's a shocking number of things in the game that have a, a move characteristic of higher than seven. Like, do they know their own scrolls? I just, I sometimes I, it blows my mind. Anyways, this guy's fantastic and I love him. And he's a Master Clan hero. He's great. I mean, yep. He's good. So auto take. Good. Yeah. Auto it's, it's, just start your list with this guy. Yeah. Like many, many lists I built, I'm just like, and we'll grace here, add to cart. Okay. And then <laughs> now what? Exactly what you just said, right? Yeah. Tom? Yeah, I like him. Yep. Arch Warlock, my dog. Look, all I ask in life is before I die, which is probably not that far in the future, can I just get a new sculpt for this? Uh, Icket Claw is amazing. It's one of my favorite figs ever, and I think it holds up. I think it's still an incredible sculpt if you get it in metal, okay? But I want you to just imagine in your head what Power Armor Rat Warlock of Clan Scryer looks like if given the modern glow-up. Like, this suit's going to look like a Tau battle suit, and I can't wait for it. Like, with just <laughs> giant claws, Okay. He just gonna look like what? What's her name? Shadow Sun? Is that the the named Tau hero? I think that's her name. I don't know something like that. Anyways, this dude's awesome and I love him. Six wounds, three up base save because he's in power armor. Now a double caster, double unbinder. Uh, he was not always both of those before. Still has his little mortal wounds gauntlet. Uh, his halberd now makes D three attacks, and you can juice it to D six. And he's fours, threes, neg two, two damage. And his piston claw is one attack at fours, threes, neg two, three damage. And I hear you asking, Vince, are you going to build a list where you give the Arch Warlock devious adversary? So then he's rolling D6 plus two attacks. And he's three attacks with his piston claw. Uh, am I going to do that? Yes, of course I am. Of course I am. Because I want to send this dude up and just wreck face with him. <laughs> You know what? That and strikes you, me you, at even the Haven Brew. It's absolutely like let's just yeah. go ham, baby. <laughs> it strikes me that it would be amazing at a thousand points. That dude would be the king of thousand point lists. Yeah, totally. Just coming in hot, so hot, so very hot. Maybe I'm changing my mind. Uh, by the way, Tom, maybe it maybe it is this. Well, uh, I could I I could do Skaven. That's all mm -hmm, I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like doing anything else is just fighting against it. And then he has a good spell. Warp Lightning Storm, better than Chain Warp Lightning by uh, a lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, so good stuff. Obviously, oh, I would all he would also be sparking himself when he's in combat, being on threes and twos. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. suck it, everybody. Here comes the Halberd mm -hmm. and Claw. You're afraid of the claw. You're afraid of the claw when the claw's making like five attacks. Let me tell you that right now. <laughs> um, anyways, this dude rules and I love him. So Cool. Anything, I mean, anybody? Any I mean, downsides he's, to this dude? he's just always he's always casting flaming weapon on himself, isn't he? As well, he's he's got the hammer from Smash Bros. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> smash lock. That's what I'm gonna, there we go. Just <laughs> just smash lock list incoming. I haven't built this one yet. I'm building. It. I'm gonna play it this weekend. Mm. Nice, nice. 
Can you imagine the damage he would do at a thousand points? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. He's a great. Oh my guy. god, he would, he would lift units. He'd be like, yep. lift that 400 unit, 400 point unit, please. Just piss and claw alone. <laughs> it's just so brutal. Okay, cool. And you know what? The best part about it is he can launch it himself. Uh, yeah, he can. Yes, he can launch. It. He can so you launch could, himself. So you well. could send him, send him upfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he can no longer affect the warp lightning cannons. That is an excellent point. But he did get cheaper from his previous incarnation as well. He actually yep. went down points from from the old version. So, um, good glow up, and he went got cheaper. So, cool. Uh, yep. Okay, the engineer and the bombardier. 105 and 115, respectively. Um, their shooting attacks got uh, different. <laughs> I don't know. The pistol has three attacks now. Who cares? You're not taking this guy for it. You take this guy because you need an engineer to stand near a warp lightning cannon or you want a cheap spark caddy. He's just a cheap hero. Um, his spell is, by the way, decent enough. Uh, generally, you'll like, you might throw the overcharge at it to go for the D6 because who cares if this guy blows himself up? It often doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The Bombardier, I am sad to see the 2d6 damage go away because that was just the most exciting roll in the world. But now it's d3 attacks, neg one ren, three damage, boo. Um, but you can make it uh, d6 attacks, so it's fine. Yep. Cool. Gentlemen, this is where we start. This is where we start to see um, a lack, a lack of appetite to to remove units like there's no need for there to be three right. small um the three three small clan scryer heroes the the engineers had a, a a good run we could have retired him um yeah. that's that that's a sculpt that that i reckon i got in like 2004 um so it's just like yeah he's oh i still he, have mine from he, the 90s he definitely absolutely could have, could have his yeah yeah like this is a very old model um and it could have just they could have just had the bombardier and put he's armed with a doom rocket uh and firing pole or a pistol and warp energy blade. Yep. <laughs> like they yep. could have just mm -hmm. done that. Mm -hmm. And then people could yep. still be happy about using their old models, right? And we could have just been like, there we go. Done and dusted. <laughs> but whatever. Yes, this like if you're not gonna make a new engineer, retire this model. Come now. Come now. Uh Storm Fiends. Uh, they're still Storm Fiends. Um, they're basically what they were. Um, they are 320 for three, and you get one battle line per one Scryer hero. This is our first chance to talk about the new battle line. We've danced around it a lot, but basically what it is is for every hero you include of those particular clans, certain units can then be tripped in and may, can, optionally, become battle line. So, like I said, you have a lot of battle line control. Um, but they're basically still storm fiends. They they do what storm fiends do. So, yep. I, I would argue that they're a lot better because you can now couple them with uh, clan rats as your generic battle line next to them, rather sure. than fives of acolytes. So functionally, yeah. the way the army works is a lot better. Uh, and then you can also pair in the small support heroes, or you could pair something like the warp bringer as your general warbringer is your general and you know have the the shooty threat and the fighty threat um sort of s supporting each other so i think that they're one of the units that benefits quite a bit from from that change and and also um you, you know just the the proliferation of other buffs to get your plus one and to hit and wound elsewhere means that that they can always be getting the all-out attack without it costing you elsewhere yep yeah mm -hmm. agreed I mean, I've found myself sometimes including just three packs of these guys in the list now as like an yep. interesting battle line fill out and, and, and having it be perfectly functional and useful. Mm, absolutely. Um, yep. and, and But yeah, I agree. The, the fact that you can just easily mix in and have them be filling a vital battle line slot while not needing all the little derpy derps around and all that, I, I mm -hmm. agree. It, it, made, it makes them a viable part of more lists, even though they haven't mm -hmm. really functionally changed. So mm. We would... um. We would be remiss here not to shout out the the goat, the scave, the greatest Skaven player on earth, Anthony Trentinelli, who's just three tournaments in a row. Yes, yes, yeah. indeed. Uh, the yeah. Storm Fiends. He uh, he put me down round five at uh, at ACO. So, mm -hmm. uh, 
yeah, he's a uh, he's a heck of a player. Um, we uh, we had a drop down, uh, you know, fight to the death where three models were left yep. on the table out of both <laughs> of our armies. Uh, and yes, that is true. The the as as uh, Romulan Dog is pointing out, there are some positive changes to the um, hit and wound rules of some of the shooting stuff here, like wind launchers mm-hmm. being on fours and threes to so being able to go to threes and twos and so on. And so mm-hmm. on. Yep, absolutely. Um, but I mean, they're still performing the same basic functional role is what I mean. Like if you like storm fiends before. <laughs> so doing the same thing. Yep. Okay. The lightning cannon is 150, and it still does the same thing it used to do, which is have a 24 inch range and you stick an engineer near it and you hope to God you roll a one or two <laughs> when you power check it. That's, this is like the ultimate slot machine unit in Skaven. Cause it's just like. Pull and see what we get. Do I get four mortal wounds or 12? And just <laughs> something explodes. Um, and if you're lucky, you get two shots out of it when you're overcharging it. That's basically what happens with this thing. You get two shots, and then it blows itself up. So, cool. If you like... If if Kenny Rogers is your man, then this is the thing for you. Okay? Uh, so there you go. Um, Scryer Acolytes... I'm not sure I see much of a use for these dudes anymore. 75 for 5. They are also still battle line with a Scryer hero. Um, there's just oftentimes better ways that you end up being able to grab cheap, useful battle line. Um, you know, you're getting five of these dudes. They're still fragile as all get out. They can still run and shoot. You know, you're on threes and twos if you target a unit with 10 or more models. Like, okay. They're fine. I just, like, they're not what I'm going to for my damage. So, yeah, I I just don't know. I've ha- I have not put them in any lists yet, is my answer. Which, um, good, <laughs> because these models are old and terrible, and everybody just uses proxies. So we all just cut up our wind mortars, our poison wind mortars. When it when it flipped over, yep. every yep. wind mortar became uh two, <laughs> became two acolytes. Okay. Anything I missed there, gentlemen? Mm-mm. Oh, these are the the most expensive model uh, in the Australian web store. So these are these are twenty bucks each, which is great. Twenty bucks each single model per blister. <laughs> Amazing. They are also the <gasps> second hundred dollar unit. Yes, <laughs> they are also the second oldest model still mm-hmm. on sale in Age of Sigmar. Right. By the way, the fir- the oldest model is also in this book. We just haven't got to it yet. <laughs> These were released in... I, I went and dug it up because I had to figure it out. They were advertised at the end of 93, and they were released in January or February of 1994. Love it. So almost 30 years old. Yep. Uh, so so if you... you- if this the, these models are older than you, hit that like button. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we haven't called for the like button hit yet. There's a lot of you watching who haven't hit liked yet. Click the button. Come on now. What are you doing for all this Skaven goodness? Click that like button. Uh, all right. The Doom Wheel. Uh, it's still the fun, wacky Doom Wheel we've come to know and love. Still makes D6 range attacks on threes, threes, neg one, D3 damage, which I submit is actually a good shooting profile. Uh, it now can roll over models with a wounds characteristic of three or less. And every time it does so on a two up, it's D three mortal wounds. And it's just whenever it moves. So you can like it when you pile in and you can charge over people and move over people. And that's basically the reason you're taking this thing. You're still never using more and more speed and always using more and more warp bolts because two D six shots at threes, threes, neg one D three. It's actually a pretty darn good shooting profile. My only question is, why is our chariot a behemoth? Like, I'm fine with it at 185 points. Why is it a behemoth? Every other... The Stormcast chariot with 13 wounds and a 3-up save. Not a behemoth. And a bigger base. And And a a bigger bigger base. Yeah, just a chariot. Just a chariot. But ours is a behemoth. Why? Like, in, in what world? Why is this a behemoth? I do not understand the justification for that, and it makes me very angry because you're actually in a lot of contention for behemoth slots in this army sometimes, so depending on your builds. It's kind of annoying. It doesn't usually stop you from taking it, but it's just it's a pain in the butt for no reason. Um, yeah. Sam, what do you think about Doom Wheels? 
I think they're really cool if you lean into them. So you need to take all of the appropriate buffs, including the double move. Mm -hmm. um, you need to cast Levitate on them so they can fly over stuff. Um, yeah, I think that these can be incredibly fun. And one of my mates who's a... Um, a, a Skaven player through and through. So shout out to Kyle. He um he always just chucks one in for the the fun element of it, and yeah. it's just so wacky and wild. And you never have a bad game against it. It's always even if it's even if it's blowing your stuff up. It's always a great a great unit to include. Um, it's not optimal, but it's like I said earlier. There's a use case for this. There's certainly a situation where you could run this um, in a viable list and and um and still do well. Yep. I will often say this is my pet unit, right? We all know that in yeah. most lists, you've got 200 points to spend on your pet unit. And this is my pet unit. Exactly what you said, right? So, yep. Okay. The warp fire thrower is still the warp fire thrower. It does what the warp fire thrower does, except that it's overcharged. It's more and more warp fire has changed now. So basically, which is a really interesting change. I actually quite like. So you can choose to overclock it. And if you do so, now what it does is it takes its 8-inch range and turns it to a 12-inch range. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And it adds... Uh, and you add one to the roll that determines if the enemy suffers one mortal wound, which is obviously on a 4-up, right? So now it becomes on a 3-up with a 12-inch range, which is very interesting for all of the reasons around teleporting and this thing popping out of units and shooting and now being able to actually reach over the nine inch line and tag the unit. Right. right. Um, but keep in mind, it is only the target unit of model. Yeah. Um, Models each in model. The unit. Thank you. Yes. So like, you're not just bathing the whole unit. Right. So is what it is. Um, so that's not as good, but that's a neat change. The important part about these is the new rules for hidden weapon teams, which we might as well just cover now. Basically, you can include one of these for every 10 clan rats or storm vermin in one of those units. Okay. I love that this, that, let me just say, the bots have been out in force here in our particular stream today. Okay. And I have like the safe filter on really yep. strongly. And yet, for some reason, they just don't trip it. That's fun. Well, other people's messages get held for well, you. Well, they thought they thought they knew what kind of stream this was with your rats. I guess, and yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the point being, in a unit of 60 clan rats, you can hide six weapon teams. That is a relevant thing we will discuss later. I wouldn't hide six warp fire throwers, but it is a thing you can do. Um, yeah, like, for the most part, they're... They're fine. 70 points. They're fine. They're not my pick. That's what I'll say. For weapon teams? Yeah, for weapon teams, yeah. Yeah. I think all, all of the weapon teams are comparable to endless spells in, in terms of their impact and cost. So you, it comes to the end of the list and you're having to think about, do I want the the swords or do I want the the purple sun or do I want the warp fire thrower? And mm -hmm. like it, it loses out in those comparisons. Yep. Okay. Uh, bum, 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 bum. All right. So. Um, Giselles, 120 for three. And single. This got this got tagged with the single thing, so you cannot reinforce these anymore, at least as of right now. Was that intentional? I don't know. But... It's what it says in the book. So for right now, you can take them in three packs. Um, they're now a five up base save. Uh, the bright side is they went to threes and threes. Neg two, two damage. They still do two mortal wounds on the six to hit. Still one shot each. Um, they're still, so they're still like poor man's long strikes, basically. Yep. yep. And uh, the cool thing is you get plus one to hit if you didn't move now. So you're on twos and threes. Not a bad shooting profile for, for three little shots. Um, I will say at 120 points, I've oftentimes, this has been another thing where like, oh, I've got roughly this amount left in the list. This is a pretty common go-to for me to throw three in because they had that 30 inch range. And I've generally been pretty happy with them. They, they could do some work. So, um, I, the first game I played, uh, I had three of these in there. Two of them got killed. The last one refused to go down, became a sniper. I rolled for him three rounds in a row. The dude rolled a six to hit. Mm. He was just on it. He couldn't be. He was just like pew, 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 little, little, little seal team six rat over there. 
Yeah. What's your take on Giselle's right now, Sam, in, in this book? Have you have you found you put any of them in lists or anything like that? No. No. You, you, need, a, you need a six pack to get optimal use out of the buffs. So when you've only got three, there's less incentive for you to then give them a Warpstone Spark or to give them whatever it is you need to give them to to, to lift them up. Um, yeah, I don't I don't see myself running them with uh, yeah three for 120 points, 40, 40 points per guy. It's just yeah, it's it's not going to happen. There's other ways of getting um, that high value damage out elsewhere that you just would choose over the Gisales. But they're, I mean, they're fine. The, the range of 30 is what makes them interesting. Um, and having multiple units go through gnaw holes now is also something that makes them interesting uh, because you could potentially try and snipe her off uh, support characters or you can try and chip away big units at degrade, big monsters at degrade or whatever. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say Giselles aren't in my list at the moment. They're usable, but they're they're not what they were. Yeah. Um, rattling guns, 12-inch range and now 2d6 plus 3 uh, attacks. Um, if you overcharge them, they go to 46 plus three. So quite a lot of shots on fours and fours, but still a great target for uh, a Warpstone Spark, obviously to just like roll hot, get a ton of shots and make them all ne- neg one damage two attacks. So fantastic. Again, can be hit one in 10. I want to address something people are talking about, um, which is each of the weapon team's hidings says one of these for each 10. Okay. So like, Reading it raw, you can see mm-hmm. like 60 clan rats could hold six warp fire throwers, six rattling mm-hmm. guns, six doom flares, right? Um, I I believe that might be technically true. I expect them to FAQ to say no, you know, it's one weapon team total per 10. I'm just assuming that's the answer. I should have stated right. that, but either way, that is you know, obviously insane because <laughs> like. Clan rats die by the bucket loads, and you could easily get that unit completely lifted. So I guess if you're gonna do that, you—that's an excuse to take overseer of destruction. Um, but like, I don't—it's that's obviously hilarious and silly. But I expect it to be FAQ'd. Um, they're still good. Yeah, rattling guns are good. Good range, good machine gun, good new profile. So, yep, cool. Uh, sixty-five points. Doom flare. Hey, buddy, how you doing? What's up with my... What's up, baby? Welcome back, Doom Flare. Welcome back. I've missed you. You're back and you're... you're, you're I'm in for you again. Here we go. All right. The Doom Flare. He moves 2d6, but that never matters because you're not going to actually have him moving around his own for mo- most of the time. He's going to be in a unit. He hides as well in units of Clan Rats and Storm Vermin all the same. You get one two attacks characteristic if this unit made a charge move. Fine. Um... You can do more and more Whirling Death, which you can crank it to 2d6, but then if you roll doubles or a 7, it kills itself. Fine. <laughs> I don't care. I'm in for it every time. 2d6 plus mm-hmm. 1. Let's do this. Uh, at the end of your charge phase, you can reveal this hidden unit if the unit which it was hiding uh, made a charge move in that phase. Um, if you do so, set up this unit wholly within 3 of the unit in which it was hiding. It can be set up within 3 inches of enemy units and can fight in the following combat phase. I don't know if it actually counts as making a charge. That's another interesting question. Uh, mm-hmm. If the unit it was hidden and charged, I'm assuming yes, but it might be no. Either way, I don't care because this bad boy is going to rock in for 2d6 attacks on threes, threes, neg two, ren, two damage. The value. Just popping three of these homeboys out and having them go to work, son. Like, it is a lot of damage. <laughs> like, it's a lot. Uh, yeah, I love these stupid idiots. Uh, they make, I, I like taking two of them in a pack of 20 clan rats and just like, if you're, if you've got, if you've got like two, three packs of clan rats as your chaff, which is a, there's plenty of viable lists that are going to play that kind of thing. Cause it's just cheap bodies. Mm-hmm. It's really funny to let people guess which unit of clan rats has this thing as they're all moving forward. And then one charges and it's like, Oh, it's that one. <laughs> <laughs> I found him. Yeah. <laughs> Out comes the nonsense. Uh, so yeah, super fun. I love that these things are, are good now. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta find some bits and start converting more Doom Flayers. I don't have enough of these guys. Yeah, I jumped on the, um, the Google image search and there's a heap of custom built, like Skaven is an army that lends itself to this naturally, but there's a heap of custom built Doom Flayers just made out of plastic card and bits box stuff. Right. And I'm going to try and, try and emulate that, build a couple. Cause I, this is one of my favorite, 
favorite units in terms of change from last book to this book. Um, just the, the way that it functions is really cool. And the it makes every unit a threat, right? You, right. you can't risk. You can't yeah. risk going into to units if this if this can um if this can wipe you or whatever. And you can create little pockets where you've got gaps in the unit, so you're further back than their weapon range, but you've got your pile in still. So yep. you say they've got a one inch range, they can't fight you over the clan rats. They go because it's their turn or whatever. You pop. Oh no, because you've had to make a charge. So you pop out. You save yourself by wrapping a, a little clan rat clan rat um semicircle there and then you can fight them obviously you're going to die anyway but it just enables you to get your 2d6 worth of attacks because it would suck if you popped out and then they killed you that wouldn't be good right 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 yeah exactly no it's so easy to put this guy in a position where he can just be safe like where he can still yep. easily pile in but isn't getting like they're foolish yep. to split their attacks and go after him right so yep. yeah like they may either have one guy or zero people who can attack him and then you're coming in hot after they go yep. and just just taking the chainsaw to him <laughs> he's great love the doom flare love it uh i've also had pet units where i'd wear like instead of the doom wheel i just take three of these guys and i'm like yep happy with that investment that about the same amount of points and i'm good uh the warp grinder uh really interesting because it can take any non-monster war machine now the difference is it doesn't like it's not random, it doesn't screw up, it doesn't hurt them. It's just now you have a tunnel. And you can yeah, pop you up. You deep nine strike away. one unit sixty five or uh, nine inches off. And I would point out the the range with which you can set up the unit around this guy is wild because he has to set up more than nine inches away, but the unit you set up next to him is also like nine inches away from enemies, but with wholly within thirteen of him. So you've got like quite a lot of space where you could pop him on an objective and then put the unit into charge space so you kind of got an extra body over there on an objective or something like there's just there's options with this thing when he pops in mm -hmm. so i i have used the warp grinder quite a lot he's showing up in a lot of lists i dig him for just putting a, a we're going to talk about the unit i like to bury in just a moment uh sam warp grinder uh, amazing any lists? yeah amazing. A of course a any a any null deploy um, and particularly in this environment where there might be scenarios or situations where you want to hide your infantry battle line with four wounds or less. Uh -huh. so he can actually just, he can provide a level of protection that way as well. Mm -hmm. Just keep them off mm -hmm. the board. Yeah, keep them fragile Galatian veterans out of <laughs> just in, in non-existence land. That's bounty hunter proof right there. Hmm. Okay, Plague Priest. Over to the Pestilence stuff. Truly the oldest model in the range released in 1993 yes he's 29 years old is this um, lord scrolk was he a named is, character back in the day right. he was lord scrolk. there you go yeah that's right <laughs> uh i mean whatever whatever with this guy's attacks he has a perfectly fine spell that can also by the way act as a heal for the corruptor which is that's a mm -hmm. nice secondary use but you shouldn't forget about um he's fine he's a priest for 100 points done explanation over <laughs> Like, he is a Pestilence Priest for 100 points. That is why you took him. Let's not pretend any other things are going on here. The Plague Claw. <laughs> okay. Uh, 6 to 30 inch range. Still has that min range thing. Hilarious. Uh, one attack, 3s and 2s, neg 2, d6 damage. You do add 2 to Battleshock rolls for units just targeted by this. You don't have to hit or wound or anything. I'm just saying it's a thing okay you know what i love about this more than anything else they put the picture of the loader guy that everybody uses as, as an acolyte sure. for for <laughs> for the picture of the catapult not the actual like catapult yeah uh when i saw this i was like this guy's an acolyte right even though this can go to twos and twos and 2d6 damage against units of 10 or more it's still not no. making the cut it's no, still it, not making the if cut. it had two attacks it could sure but then it would be threes and threes <laughs> that's what would happen you're only but, allowed to go to twos and twos tom when you make the single attack as every okay. as every like hero I who's know. got a random spear they throw will tell you i know i know but imagine imagine if it was two attacks imagine like how that. how much would that change the math 
a lot on a hundred and thirty point unit. It'd be because worth like two it. attacks. Like if you can throw four d six damage. Yeah, yeah. At a unit, I'd take it. I would take it. All right, I've got the use case for this one. You take a um, you take a, a vermin lord, um, who teleports six inches away. He shoots the horror ghast at a unit. He yep. then charges in and fights minus one bravery, and then you target them with this unit. So it's helping, yeah, it's helping your bravery bomb, yep. and then um, and then the enemy all run away. That's, I have that's, seen. That's this how to is, use this. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I'm still keeping this as playable in my playable list because I yep. have seen people talking about lists using horror gas and using this to mm-hmm. combo with it to basically just pop units out of existence between targeting them with this and then having the horror gas near them. So I yeah. like there probably is a wombo combo build that's pretty scary as you just bust people off. Uh, you know, most units just flee immediately. Uh from that like if they can if they if you can get a model off or something right so it's mm-hmm. it's there it's there okay the plague priest on furnace uh, again both of i didn't mention the last time but both the big things because the other one's so bad this is the one you'll probably actually see sometimes mm-hmm. this goes up to 15 wounds its attack profile is absolutely nothing to write home about other than that giant plague sensor which which it now does drop and crush you for pretty easily on a two up um and it can do it in both turns <laughs> which is just nice. Uh, so it can just pop two, two up D three plus four mortals, which is good. Still has a five up ward. And importantly, it still has its aura of battleshock community. Um, so 13 inch range battleshock community, um, has the same prayer and it's minus one to be wounded in melee, which does make it a little tougher as well. Like minus one to wound is a great penalty. It's harder Mm -hmm. to back out of. Mm hmm. Um, again, these things are challenging because they still don't move on their own, and that's so. You this thing will eventually just be stuck somewhere. <laughs> but hold on. So, but when you doubles, your allied units are friendly models. They're not enemy models. When you oh, when you play doubles, y- yes, there. But it has to be friendly Skaven models. Right. So if you double, if you do doubles with Skaven. Mm-hmm. These things would still move if allied models are nearby. Okay. And you'd still sure. grant battle shock immunity to allied models. Yeah, I mean, sure, fine, I guess. Because they're not enemy, so it's, you're either friendly or enemy models. And Look, not just make sure models. you push it into the middle of the board or near an objective before it loses its ability to move. That way you can still actively pray and hit people with your prayers. That's all you sure. need. Sure. And it is tough, like I said. Like it, it is legitimately a, a, a diff, more, more difficult piece to remove because of that neg one to wound and a five up ward. Like, it's good. So, yeah, it's fine. Sam, any thoughts on the big the big plague furnace? You just, you're just you spending 100 points on plague priests. I think you, I'd rather three plague priests than one plague furnace. That's fair. I can see now that it doesn't automatically damage the things around it. I've taken it in some like very heavy <laughs> melee lists. Mm-hmm. Just not and it doesn't give the six up ward anymore either. Well, you can you can take um, you could like again. I I will I've put this in a couple infantry heavy lists, and I I did play a game with this furnace like I mentioned, and I used him to just bless yep. my big infantry blocks, right? Like that was just he would just pray and bless because he yeah. was outside when he was outside of range of doing other valuable prayers. It can still yeah. trigger a great plague. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's still a chant. Yeah, so. Um, and a six up ward on a unit of 60 guys is, is it's something it'll, Good. it'll do some it's, work. It's useful. Yeah. Uh, plague monks, 90 points for 10, one battle line per one pestilence hero. Hello, warp grinder friend. And why is this the warp grinder friend? Because they have the actual built in plus one to run and charge in their musician. They're the only unit <coughs> in the book that has it built in. Uh, so you lose your little book of woes attack when you come up from the grinder, but I don't care, uh, because then they can be on an eight, which you could theoretically reroll through a triumph or through the command ability or whatever. The battalion. Yeah. And so they pop up, they're great on the charge. Um, and they, they're try they're dropping on an eight. So they've been my warp grinder best friend. They come in, I always use the fetid blades because there's actually no reason to use the fetid blade in most staff. Like, not that it actually matters, I wouldn't care. My unit is mixed because I have original 90s metal um, mm-hmm. plague monks. 
But I always just say they're armed with fetid blades because you want the threes and fours because you're going to have 30 of these dudes. They're going to have three inch reaches. Anyways, so they'll fight in four ranks deep. And yeah, they come in making, you know, three attacks each unbuffed and sixes to hit are uh, neg two rend, which is annoying because you do have to separate your pile. Um, but it is what it is. So they're fine. They come in with a lot of attacks and do some work. For, they do the for, work. For bargain and, basement prices. And they work great on if you pair them with a cursor. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Then you can replace the neg two rend with just straight with mortal mortals. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Am I missing anything on plague monks? There, they still die in bucket loads. They're like six up. Yeah, loads. they just that. That's right. They they are the glass ultimate glass cannon, aren't they? Just the six plus save. Poor bravery. Well, I well think they're not the, the ultimate. Wouldn't no, you no, say no, plague center? <laughs> No, that's right. <laughs> they um they are a glass cannon, and uh, this is one of those examples where controlling what your battle line is uh, becomes really valuable. So yes. you can you can just opt to have those units not be battle line, um, yes. and and therefore not seed any battle tactics or any points in the the relevant scenarios. Hundred percent. Like if you can keep these guys out of being Galatian veterans by shutting off their battle line status, boy, is it useful, right? Because otherwise they are just out easy, easy money yeah. for your opponents. Okay. Sensor bearers. Oh, it is hammer time. Uh, <laughs> well, in fact, we're going to, we're going to get sensor bearers are 90. They were 70 in the little booklet that came with the GHB. Ignore that. They're 90 for five, two wounds each now though. Great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Uh, we'll talk about another unit later that should have gotten that treatment and didn't. Uh, mm. three attacks, base, threes and threes, neg one, two damage. You may recognize that attack profile, threes, threes, three attacks, threes, threes, neg one, two. That would be the profile of shield annihilators. <laughs> okay. Except these dudes also get plus one to attack if they charge. So then they go to four attacks each. So that unit of, uh of five dudes is putting out 20 attacks on threes threes neg one two damage um they can also get plus one to wound if they're uh near some plague monks so they can become threes and twos they can also they're also neg one to be wounded which is fine whatever who cares they're gonna die pretty easy but you can also get a million buffs on these idiots to get them on just straight twos and twos get them up to five attacks that is bargain basement easy buffing let's just take a look at that what that looks like uh, Age of the Sensor Bearer is upon us. I couldn't be more excited to have these guys back in the mix. Stats for the Sensor oh. Bearers with plus one to hit and wound. There are multiple sources for such a bonus. And plus one attack, multiple sources for such a bonus. I'm And then and then their charge bonus. Yeah. Okay. 23 damage against a four up save. Hoo-ah! That is, that is a great 90 point investment, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Coming in hot i wonder if um i'll bet there's some pretty good printable models out there for these guys yep there are that was that that might be in my print list <laughs> i still have i still have old metal sensor bearers but i don't have enough uh yeah so these guys are good sam what do you think about these as your little missile units yeah i love i love them in fives um just to to go around and explode things but you can run a 15 you could go double reinforced and then you can get them at plus three attacks so they get to six attacks twos twos you can get the rent to four so twos twos rent four and then damage three against our um our veterans this this ghb so that's the that's the sweet spot if someone can pull that off i'll be very impressed yeah that is uh that's a fun time that's a fun time for sure um and the nice part is if you do take them up to 10 don't forget their reach would go to two inches so at the 10 or 15 they do it oh yeah yeah yep. yep. on that 25 mil base so like you can fight three deep which means they're all fighting basically all the time so mm -hmm. it's good uh the claw lord He's 110 points, and he's a Claw Lord. He does what Claw Lords do. He's five wounds with a four-up save. He gets more attacks, and he has his plus-one attack command ability for Verminous units. Cool. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to do a Storm Vermin thing, he mm -hmm. is part of your kit. That is for sure. That's where he shows up. I will point out that the Claw Lord's base profile with his Warp Forged Blade 
is six attacks on threes and threes. Neg one, two damage. Tom, what is the base profile for the Lord level Stormcast? So not the special characters, but just the, the generic Lord level uh, Stormcast. Isn't it, isn't it four attacks on threes and threes? Or five? Five attacks on threes and threes. Neg five one, attacks two. on threes and threes. Neg one, two. Vis-a-vis, -vis by the transitive property, Claw Lords are better fighters than Stormcast heroes. Suck it. Take that six. You do only have a four up save instead of the five up the or the three up the stormcaster sporting. Shh. Shh. Obviously. Yes. Yeah, he's fine. He he shows up where you want. Uh oh yeah, you're right, assistant ref. Sensor bears are 32 mil. I'm sorry, they are 32 mil. Yeah. Um, that is a good point. They are absolutely on the bigger base. Um Yeah. Claw Lord's cool. He's fine. You use him with mm -hmm. like Storm Vermin when you want to make him choppy great next <laughs> uh scritch yeah we're gonna call no. this guy skip <laughs> scritch mm -hmm. skip claw uh there is no purpose to this dude hard skip great glad we all agree <laughs> okay clan rats they are now the wor the the clan rats are the best worst unit in the game okay let me see if i can back up what i'm saying there they yeah. are now the cheapest wound to point ratio. I'm not counting pink nonsense. Okay. Like we're going to yeah. leave pink nonsense to the side yep. for a moment. Okay. Yep. Of like actually what you're purchasing. Yeah. Because they are again, 20 dudes for a hundred points. They're obviously battle line all the time. Cheaper than zombies, obviously worse than zombies. That is to say like they don't have zombies, six inch pile. They don't have damage or output. Or mortal yeah. wounds or More no wounds. output. Yeah. These are just bodies. Now, there are bodies that can, like, retreat and charge and get plus two to run, okay, which is cool, but they are just meat. They, and they could, they could go to two attacks a model pretty easily. These have been returned to basically what how we used to use Skaven Slaves in old right. school, just where you would just have, like, two like or meat. three blocks of 50 that did nothing except live and be in the way. Yeah. They basically downgraded to pure on old, old school Skaven slaves. It's just you return a D three at the end of each Battleshock phase, which is a meaningless significant. Or, or, sorry, yeah, or, or meaningful, not meaningless. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Meaningful <laughs> thing. Like it's actually super good uh, because mm -hmm. it's every Battleshock phase. The number of times that has actually made a huge difference, and just my testing so far, it said because I've been playing with these guys since the box came out, testing them because mm -hmm. they've had this unit since the box set. The number of games where that is actually super mattered is a lot. I had one clan rat survive. Okay, like a thing. Pa like yeah. he was he was within range to be battle shock immune because I had a sensor near him. I had one guy left after a bunch of stuff fought a unit of sixty. I returned back D three, which gave me enough because of that return to hold the objective. Okay. And then he rallied him. And then I retreated him and then rallied him and I was back up to like, uh, and I got myself back over 20, over two rallies. So like nice. between that and the returns, like you can, you can get there. Anyways, it's they're They're just cheap bodies. That's how you use them. Never expect anything more than cheap bodies. That's what they're for. And if it, something bounty hunters hits them, they are who cares? gone. They did. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it did. Um, there's a few things. So the five up save is really nice. Five up yeah. on the wall scroll. And then there's some coherency stuff you can do with the battle shock phase. So coherency is at the end of the turn. Uh, battle shock is the, the phase before then. So you can you can get back into coherency, um, bringing back slay models, which is sometimes really nice. Yep. Absolutely agreed. Storm Vermin? Uh, yeah, they're good. They're still choppy. Um, again, mm -hmm. they can, they're two attacks, three, three, snag one, one, pretty standard elite profile moved to the four up save, which mm -hmm. is great base. Still Massive. again, have yeah, it's such a big difference in their, their efficacy. Um, still have the retreat and charge on the scroll, which is very useful. And they bodyguard everybody on a four up and they bodyguard verminous people on a two up, um, which means they can two up. Uh, absorb wounds off of a warbringer, which is pretty cool. Like it definitely means that makes that guy more survivable. Um, I think the two ways you'll see to use these dudes are like if you're really feeling saucy, you can take the thirty attack pack and burn two of your re reinforcement points. You gotta, you gotta have other like you gotta have a plan there. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can't just like put thirty on the table and be like, okay, this is my thing. 
because that there that's not going to work. Again, they will explode still if hit by a proper bounty hunter's unit. Yeah. Um, but they but they can they can do the work. They do damage. They will lift stuff. You know, you can get them two, three, four attacks. Like that's just entry cost, and you can put them on twos and twos like that. Right. Yeah. Um, the other use I see for them is a couple ten packs to just be around mm -hmm. and start bodyguarding heroes. Right. So, yeah, te ten packs are nice. The footprint is small enough that you can get them into train. Um, they've got this sort of. Whereas the sensor bearers need to be going into combat to be adding value to your army, storm vermin have like this latent capacity there where they're either supporting a hero um, or they're, they're tougher to move. There's a, there's a heap of reasons that you would take storm vermin, even though the raw damage output is higher on other comparable units. So um, I, I really like them. I wrote a list with thirty. And I thought I was being clever, and then Vince sent through a list that was almost identical. Okay, so maybe not. Maybe it's a, maybe that's the build. <laughs> we were both th this this tripped yeah. both of our Johnny senses so hard. Yeah. Like I have, yeah. I have an Excel file from before War Scroll Builder got updated that's just like mm -hmm. twenty lists, right? Just yeah. trying stuff. Yeah, little power pairs. It's like if I take this, that leaves me with fourteen hundred. Like you yep. go from there. Yep. Uh, okay. Um, pack masters, you will never take unless you can't afford a, or unless you either yep. can't afford or out of hero slots for a second master molder. That's it. Cause mm -hmm. you can, the important part now is how crack the whip works, which both of these units have and crack the whip is at the start of your movement phase. Again, pretty interesting timing there. Uh, you can pick. Uh, one friendly clans molder pack unit wholly within 13, which both Radogers and Giant Rats are pack units. Um, and until your next movement phase, you can add three to run rolls, three to charge rolls, and plus one to wound for a Tevax made with melee weapons. Whew. Man, that's a buff. That is a buff. Right there. Uh, you want to talk about a guy that's going to often try just be like running six behind a unit. <laughs> <laughs> right? Just like, ah, got to keep up. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's an incredible buff. Uh, and then also he can unleash more and more beasts. He has a command ability where on a three up he can when a pack unit is destroyed. On a three up he can get a, an identical replacement unit set up wholly within 12 of him and nine from enemies. So pretty cool. Um, so it's a three-up chance to bring back your your like four-pack of rat ogres, which is, uh, by my estimation, amazing value. And mm -hmm. he can heal D three units to a to a rat ogre unit or or a something as well, which is what you're going to do since they have six wounds. And since there's a battle tactic about healing rat ogres, I know Vince, we don't talk about book battle tactics, but there is one there that's achievable. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, you could absolutely just have like a couple of these guys and just be like, "Yep, got them." <laughs> Done, complete, healed. Yeah, these dudes are great. The the master molders great. Pack masters, like I said, are your fallback if you're out of hero slots or you just don't have ninety points to fit them in. So, cool. Mm -hmm. Hell pit a bomb. We talked about it earlier. You know, it's it's actually pretty scary as monsters go. It is a fighting beast. It can benefit from some of the buffs we've talked about. Some of them, like it can't get the plus three to charge thing. You can't whip it, but you can give it the other stuff. It's still random movement, which kills it for me. Like, I just... This thing can do a lot of damage if it gets there, but it's still... Like, if you take it, you're basically going to always take the 16 wounds and a 4-up save uh, mm -hmm. modification, and it's still not going to get there. It's just going to mm -hmm. die. Mm -hmm. So. It's fun. I would not say you would never take it, but it's still not there. And it's because the random move just... Give it a move speed, and you could actually see use for this thing. Yeah. So. Um, cool. You there know there might be. In... I just I'm thinking about something. I got I haven't I this is literally just popped into my head. But, if you had the three master clan heroes and you whipped your rat ogres and had them charge, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I could, cause you can shove this dude through 
uh, a novel, right? Like it, there's mm-hmm. novel doesn't have a monster prohibition. So I could see the rat ogres like moving in and you get the, the nine and then him having a use. Cause you just kind of stick him near one of your back and all those pop him up at nine and then he can auto charge in. So I guess there's how I would use him. There you go. Yep. As part of like yeah. the Mulder master clan, you know, wonder twin powers activate, but look, you had to I'm just saying you can do it. You can do it. Yeah, like anything in this book, you can um, you can pick your buffs and you can pick your rules interactions mm-hmm. to to make anything viable and anything work. There um there was a time in 2014 when Cacophonic Choir was the best spell in the game and the Hell Pit Abomination was the best monster in the game. So both those units they're they're coming up on their 10 year anniversary. The punishment the punishment yeah. for that. Hopefully it sunsets and we get a new Cat Choir and a new Hell Pit rule. Oh boy! Yeah, I remember those times. Those were good times when, when <laughs> yes, yeah, Cacophonic choirs just run around killing everything. Hell pits were destroying whole units. Oh boy, good times. Okay, how long do you have to be in prison? Rat ogres. Boy, did these change. Uh, first of all, LOL on that model picture. <laughs> the fact that that got printed in a book, people should feel bad about that. Now six wounds. So even though they can be battle line with a Molder hero, they will never be galley vets, which makes them a really good bounty hunters. These guys are great bounty hunters. Uh, they are both fighting beast and pack, so they can benefit from mm-hmm. everything. Um, they're 140 for two, and their attacks got better because now they're four attacks on threes and threes. Neg one, two damage, and six ups or double taps, which is awesome because you can very easily put these guys on twos and twos. So sixes to double tap on twos and twos is obviously amazing. Uh, And yeah, these dudes do work. I have been running a four pack of these in most of the lists. I had it in two out of the three games I played uh, with them. And boy, oh boy, did these guys never let me down. They have been amazing so far. I love them. Like they're just beasts, they're just beasts. Mm-hmm. Sam, this is, is this is this also your vote for another one of your potential hammers? Like very. Oh hammer-ly. mate, yeah, they, these are phenomenal. Getting getting the counters two models on objectives, getting the four plus save, like the 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 buffs here are great. Uh, and and being battle line, being able to being able to take units of four where they're not subjected to the poor coherency and only eating one of your reinforcements. Like I think a I think a six would do a lot of work, but the range one is a real killer. So I think yeah, you're probably sticking with the the fours. Um, yeah, I love I love this unit. I, I've been including them in all of my lists and I've been building some of these these plastic sculpts. And not only do they look terrible, but they're covered in mold lines in a really, un- like it must've been very early on in the technology because yeah. the way that the molds are pressed together, you have yeah, they're like really... the earliest plastic sculpts. Yes, yeah. Are, yeah, so yeah. Like really, really frustratingly difficult mold lines to get to and to remove. So yep. uh, no fun. Uh, Blue Cho, uh, he says, didn't GW literally make a newer set of Skaven models for mm-hmm. late Warhammer Fantasy Battle? It wasn't actually mm-hmm. 8th edition. It came out in Island of Blood. Um, and they yeah. took them out of the store and never sold them again. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. Blue Cho, that happened. I have a bunch of those. <laughs> They're not. Nice. Yeah, so do yeah. I, yeah. Uh... And why didn't they use that for the model? Like, that for the picture? I, I, because you can't buy that model. They have to put the it's picture not in the, web the one you can yeah. buy. Yeah, it's not in the web store. The all of my rat ogres are either the '90s metal rat ogres, which were also mm-hmm. better than these plastics because they're like huge, mm-hmm. like really mm-hmm. muscular and oversized, or the plastic Island of Blood. <laughs> those are those yep. are. I got a dozen. I think I have a dozen rat ogres, and they're all that. So there you go. Rat swarms. They are fifty-five points for two. You will never take this unit. This is the unit mm-hmm. we got here. This is this unit is trash. It's I, they, this was my unit as well, Vince. I had this one. And do you know who I'm replacing them with? Nurglings in the Corruptor build. Nurglings are actually good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have to run the Corruptor as your general. Yeah. So Plague Rats, I think, is what I'm gonna what I'm gonna try out. Yes. A hundred percent better pickup. So At, Yes, Tom. They are four wound swarms that do nothing special, make no attacks, and they are eight wounds with no save. Yes, I understand you can return a slain model to the unit. There will be no unit. These things are straight 
trash. For 45 points, Tom, I can get 20 clan rats. 20 wounds. I understand. I understand. Like, there I'm is thinking no about fitting them, in, fitting them in the last bit instead of an endless spell. Um, you, you take the endless spell. It's better every time. But, but I'm actually thinking about on, like, Steve's tables, which are going to, like, do holy wounds at the end of the turn. Like, They're, it would be enough... It would be enough to like kill a base, but then you're going to put the base back automatically. Terrible. And you're they never going to lose the unit. The worst. The worst. <laughs> um, uh, I'm am t- terribly sorry, guy. Time time has gotten away from me, so I do, do I actually need to wrap up. No, um, no problem. But I would I would love to give you my my quick overview of Eshin, given it is my favorite. Yeah, do you mind? Like, let's just can we jump? Yeah. Like, let's just jump. Let's Giant rats, they're funny because they get neg two rend. You'll probably still never rend. take them for they're 60. Cool. It's funny because you get neg two. All right. Deathmaster, uh, go. Like, you, you need... take us through Eshin. Yeah, you, absolutely. You the death, the Deathmaster does mortal wounds now on sixes to hit rather than exploding sixes, uh, which is significantly better. Uh, he, he does need... Um, an extra attack though that we're about to see he's got a weeping blade uh, and there's another death master that has weeping blades so he just has has one more and um, he's, he's basically better in every way uh, these guys can still run and shoot uh, the shooting is really significant yeah it is yeah it so, is so look the, the the mortal wound damage that you're able to do and the fact that it's a 12 inch range yep. uh, because you obviously have quite a lot of instances where you're popping up nine inches or six inches away from mm-hmm. um, you know, the opposing units. It means that if the character's close enough to the screen, um, you can you can often just pick the character off. The mortal wounds are amazing um, into stuff like Kragnos, for example. So some yep. units that they, they just rely on having a zero plus save um, that even with Rend is going back to a two plus. Uh, so that 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 I found to be really useful, and then the the other thing is previously you only had poison in shooting for whatever reason they they put the star yeah they put the warp star in the poison but not their not their little blade um, but now yeah the lot does so yeah slink slink skittershank um, who yes. I don't think we I don't yes. think we can buy him in Australia um, I picked mine up off off eBay from from Europe somewhere but yeah he's just amazing. Um, and the, my favorite thing about him is not the war scroll, which is phenomenal. He's got fight first if he's near his friends. He can deep strike six away. But my favorite thing is if you put him next to normal gutter runners, <laughs> the disparity in the model quality. Yeah. <laughs> these guys are just like, these are brand new. And these are these are what Games Workshop should be using to represent the Skaven range. Um, but yeah, the, the claw pack puts out a heap of attacks. So it's got like 10 attacks, um, sixes to hit a D3 mortal wounds from the unit and yep. the unit can fight at the start of the phase. So what we can do is we can go um, slink can fight and then he can retreat because he's got that, that special rule on his war scroll. Then we can go the skitter shank claw pack. Then we can go um, but with a unit. Like it's just amazing that the way that those things pair. So um yeah, really, really impressed with them. And then the the humble gutter runners and night runners both got glow ups as well. So the gutter runners got elite, um, and they're they're popping out three shots each. And then uh, they've added plus one to their wound value as well. Uh, and then those the the night runners can still pre game move, which we spoke about earlier. The desire yep. um, or the the lack of desire to be low drop. Um, this even plays into that further because if your opponent can alpha, creating separation between the night runners and the rest of your army gives you an additional turn. And in some instances, it might be a determining factor in them giving you the turn. And then because you've already pushed up, you can push up again and you can start to play the pinning game. So Skaven trades really well, but it can also pin yep. and then disable their ability to get onto um, the objectives or to score secondary. So I just, I, I think night runners at 10 for 90 are absolutely phenomenal and it's not a meme anymore. So previously when I was doing it, I was like, right. what, what are the edge, what are the edge cases for, for using these guys effectively? But now it's actually like, oh, these guys do mortal wounds in multiple phases. Um, big units can have long reach and be doing mortal wounds over the top of screens. There's the potential for them to be piling in twice, which creates openings on those 25 mil bases. Like there, there's a lot to like about what they've, what they've done with Eshin. Um, and yeah, yeah it's, I mean, it's quite a, <laughs> like it's wanna... quite amusing that they didn't update the range. I like... <laughs> know it's the biggest crime. Cause yes, Slink is incredible. I can't tell it enough. The fact that mm-hmm. Slink and the Deathmaster are D three mortals on the sixes mm-hmm. to hit. Like I had Slink 
and and his pack turn around and just spike Durthu off the table. Yep. Because absolutely. I just rolled hot and it was just like poof, just mm-hmm. tinder. It was just mm-hmm. splinters. Oh, the fact that the regular gutter runners and the night runners are all still one mortal wound on a six to hit and melee and shooting so good. One other quick thing, the gutter runners can go into ambush and now they don't have to come from the edge of the board, but they can Mm -hmm. pop out uh, wholly within six of a terrain feature, which is just great Mm -hmm. for sort of mid-table versatility and where they show up. So agree agree with everything you said. Eshin came out amazing and it Mm -hmm. is a crime that we have to deal with the sculpts that we have for these things. A it's, crime. It's fortunate we didn't start with Eshin because we might not have got any of the other units done. Couldn't just <laughs> think about that. So, um, I, I do need to go. I've got I've got some pickup to do. But thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Sam, and it's I'll, been an absolute <laughs> pleasure. We're gonna we'll we'll, we'll sally forth, but appreciate go for it. it. AOS List Labs, go check it out. It'll be linked in the description. Go give Sam a sub. He's doing good stuff, and that'll also force him to do more content. I can watch. That's right. Feel the pressure. Exactly. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate it, brother. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See ya. As Sam skitter leaps away, we will continue on. Here we go. We were basically through all the units anyways. Um, so, the Endless Spells. Uh, yeah, Vermintide's okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. It's like, uh, it's like the spider uh, Endless Spell mm-hmm. for... Um, gets. Um, the problem with it is that they can move away from it. Like the finishing a normal move, run or retreat, uh, it's really easy to not. Yep. And so then it's only when you move it and the movement on it is only, I mean, it's seven, which is decent. Um, but if, you know, it's going to, like, you, it's okay. It's okay. That's exactly right. Warp Lightning Vortex is still Warp Lightning Vortex. It still does what it does. It's, it's It doesn't cause the loss of fly anymore. Correct. Yes. What it does now is it still double taps mortal wounds potentially, and it, you can't run. But it got rid of the you. You can fly. So yeah. Okay. Fine. The Bell of Doom is your most unreliable battle shock immunity in the universe because uh, not only could it explode, but it's actually a very low cast value, so it can quite easily be dispelled. And then the big time, the big glow up, the gnaw hole. Because now, once per turn, blah, 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 you can move to it and then teleport through it. Designer's note, you can use this ability once per turn with each null hole faction terrain feature in your army that's on the battlefield. Yeah. What? So everybody can jump in a hole, go to other holes. We're moving our whole army around. Zippy soupy. The difference is it also has the Sylvaneth limitation of now if there is an enemy unit within three inches of it, that null hole shuts off. Yeah. So it is very easy for them to block you off. They just need to stand something three inches. But away. if you were doing teams and had six gnaw holes on the table. Damn, good lord. <laughs> sure. Then then I don't know if you could actually fit them. <laughs> Probably on Steve's tables since they're still old and big. Because they do have to be 18 inches away from each other. Uh, and there's the points. We've talked about all of them. Lists. Let's do some lists. So we will end here on some lists. Like Sam made it almost to the end. So there you go. Uh, these are some fun lists that I've been playing around with or have played. Uh, so first up, we have what I call Skaven Impossible. Cue the Mission Impossible theme. Uh, okay, so the Deceiver, who has incredible agility in the Gnaw Bomb. A regular Deathmaster. Oh, by the way, they updated the Deathmaster so he can hide in Night Runners too. I didn't say that. Yep. In, the, in the previous version, okay. in, yeah, in, yeah, yeah, it came yeah, out yeah. of the box. He could only hide in uh, Clan Rats or Storm Bourbon. Now he can hide in Night Runners mm-hmm. as well. Slink, because he's amazing. Uh, a plague priest on foot who happens to have this spell called Curse. It's pretty cool. Weird. Five gutter runners, five gutter runners, ten night runners, thirty plague monks, and a warp grinder. They're a, they're 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 friends. Three storm fiends. I actually have the grinder fist, so they're going in reserve as well. Uh, and then the claw pack, and then three Gisales, bounty hunters for the uh, gutter runners yep. uh, and. The uh, yeah, uh, for the and the plague runners. monks, uh, and the plague monks, yes. And the basic plan here is the death master is kind of off board because he's in the night runners, the gutter runners are off board, the gutter runners are off board, the plague monks are off board, the grinders off board, the storm fiends are off board. The deceiver is set up in the backboard, the uh, the 
only thing that's going to be anywhere near range is you have some night runners who are out kind of screening maybe an area to keep your territory. You've got Giselle sitting at 30 inches and you've got a plague priest who's going to hide behind terrain. Sure. Basic plan. The vermin lords outside of unbind range standing near a gnaw hole. Dreaded skitter leaps the plague priest to six inches away. Plague priest then curses the unit. You then pop up with your plague monks out of the grinder at nine inches, as well as Slink, who's six inches away, uh, as as well as like the storm fiends, uh, you know, who are going to be nine inches away, and the gutter runners who pop out of terrain. Everybody shoots, lots of mortal wounds, out a lot of shooting, and then you charge. And the plague monks now charging the cursed unit are charging on yep. eight potentially rerollable. The monks right there to make them reroll. And, or I'm sorry, the priest is right there to make him reroll, and then yep. you're just hoping for a long bomb on like the the storm fiends or whatever, and that's what happens. You just collapse on them, like they make you. Yep. If they make you go first, it's a foolish mistake because you are going to be all up in them guts. You're just coming out of nowhere. You just in, in, surround, go to town, and yep. so many those those two units of gutter runners are putting out thirty shots with every six being a mortal wound. Right, so like it's it's doing work. That's not to mention all the normal rules yeah. too. What do you think of this list, Tom? I like it. It's fun. I like the alpha, the weird, unusual alpha of it. Mm-hmm. And the deceiver just sits in the back, and then he comes in as cleanup, right? Because he's next right. round, he flaming weapons himself, and then and then skitter leaps into six inches away to to now yep. pick at the weekend things. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Josh A, any thoughts on the Warpnaw Vermin Lord? Yeah, the the Monstrous Arcanum one. My thoughts are he is incredible for his points right now, and that won't last. There will be an update to the Monstrous right. Arcana that will come, and he'll either get Legends or get his points adjustment and not be yeah. as good. So yeah. I wouldn't bet on him. The next list is called Rack and Ruin. This is a double Warbringer list, Tom, so this is probably right up your alley. Yep. Uh, Warbringer number one has Devious Adversary, the Warpstone Charm, and Flaming Weapon. War- Warbringer number two has Rust Cursed Armor. He could also have the Shield of Distraction or something if you wanted. Yep. Uh, a regular Claw Lord on foot. Master Molder, Gray Seer, Plague Priest, 30 Storm Vermin, 4 Rat Ogres, Clan Rats for Chaff, Double Command Entourage to get the Trip Magic Items, uh, and then, uh, the Storm Vermin, and the Rat Ogres are in Bounty Hunters to go do some brutal, brutal work. This is yep. much more straightforward, and it's just hammer time. I like this. Time. It's just hammer time. Just hammers all the way down. Yep. It's all yep. you're doing. It's like, you still got some sneaky, sneaky tricks, um, but yep. like, most of your army is fighting on twos and twos. Yep. All the time. Yep. Just going yep. in hot. Uh, so yeah. There you go. Fun. Uh, yeah. yeah, uh, I, I like, I like the new Skaven book is what I'll say. Yeah. I mean, this one's just all heat all the time, right? Like if you yeah. want hammers, this has hammers. Um, yep. uh, and then finally, thank will scheme. <laughs> so this is basically a, an exploration of what I talked about in the, when we were talking about thank will. Yep. So this uses bounty hunters, warlord and command entourage. It's like a million, million drops. Who cares? Thankful with two warp fire braziers and two projectors, a gray seer, a gray seer. So now we're at three master clan heroes, uh, a master molder, slink, and a plague priest on foot. And yep. then four rat ogres, 30 plague monks, five gutter runners, 20 clan rats, and a warp grinder. So we're pulling the warp grinder plague monk trick again, because yep. why not? We've got the rat ogre master molder trick. Thankful. Oh, and then we've got launch hunt and the purple sun. So obviously the plan here is very simple. You get Delete. people, you, you get the plague monks up with the grinder. Thankful goes up, melts a unit, drops a purple sun behind them. Yep. And then, so they're neg one to, to, to save. And then in comes the plague monks on the reroll and just goes to town. Right. Now being yep. rend one slash rend three, making like oodles of attacks. Profit. Yep. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. And Thankful obviously can power out that purple sun quite easily. So it's not really an issue. Yeah, it's just like this is this is the Thankful's scheme is basically like an ungodly alpha strike. 
because yeah. he launches up, melts an entire unit, walks in, punches the crap out of something else, while, while a horde of screaming plague monks come in and just go ham with a purple sun sitting behind him. Yep. And, like, even if the purple sun needs to put them into the neg one to save range, which oftentimes you can make sure it doesn't, but even if it did, who cares? <laughs> like, who cares if my plague monks have neg one to save? They were all going to die anyways. True. Uh, John Dale says, Ren 3, question mark. Remember, a 6 to hit on a Plague Monk turns them into Ren 2. So, hence, with the Purple Sun as well, they're effectively Ren 3. So, there you go. There's three fun lists. That was a quick journey at the end of the show, but I hope that gave you some ideas. Um, as far as, like, buy list, I mean, it's, there's no, I wish I could tell you what somebody asked for, like, a simple buy list. I wish I could tell you what the simple buy list, uh, was. And I just don't have an answer for that. Um, no, there's just a lot of different builds depending on it. This is the best way to describe it is you're looking at a cities like army that can yeah. kind of build and do whatever you want it to. Yep. So it's just like find the combination of units that you think will make a compelling list for you. Yep. And there you do go. That. Start there. It's a huge army. Um, but I will say things that you should. I, I guess there's a couple I could say. Get a Gray Seer on foot. He's going to show up in a ton of lists. Get a Plague Priest. He's going to show up in a ton of lists. Um, buy a Vermin Lord because there because you can build any of the Vermin Lords out of him. So you know there you go. Yep. And see if you can find four Island of Blood Rat Ogres. <laughs> so there That's you go. A, those are all great places to start. Yeah, and then like twenty Clan Rats because it'll often be a battle line unit you'll want to include just for cheap chaff. So there, there is like a potential buy list. We got there. We got there. All right. Well, Tom, good stuff. Uh, yeah. Sounds fun. Oh, there you go. Josh A, is this still a bad first army? Yes. <laughs> because it's so big and it relies on a lot of like well, it's, wombo it's why combos. Cities, it's why cities is not a good army. Yeah, it's old models that are often challenging and hard to put together and annoying. It's a huge multitudinous number of models often. And it, uh, like, it's tough to build good lists. It requires a lot of, like, careful play. So, yes, at the moment, it is still not a great starting army. It's probably not a great best first army. Um, but hopefully we've helped if somebody wants to go there. Um, but you know, it's, you, it's, I think it is a very good second army. I think it yeah. may be one of the most fun second armies. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, that brings us to the end. Hey, everybody, if you haven't hit like do so, uh, if you've, uh, haven't subscribed, do, you know, do that too. Uh, Hey, guess what? There's an affiliate link down there now for element games. So check that out. If you're going to buy stuff, if this interested you to buy anything, go use that link and go buy your stuff at element games. Um, so cool. Uh, and then, uh, as always, if we've got a Patreon, if you want to support the channel, that's focused on hobby and feedback. Uh, so like if you're looking for to take your next step on your hobby journey, check that out. All that kind of stuff. Click buttons. Do things. It's fun. We appreciate your support, as always. It's really great. And thank you to everybody who's watching and who's helped grow the channel over time. This was a long show, but a good one. Uh, I'm happy with the book. It's a good book. Not perfect, but hey, let's hope for uh, let's hope for the LRL treatment, okay? That's all I'm saying. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Uh, anyways, uh, how do they look going into the meta? Uh, I, I kind of talked about it a little at the beginning, but my general feeling is good. They're, they're a, they will firmly sit in the fat middle and, and, and the hands of a, you know, a strong player. I think they will perform strongly. So there you go. Yep. Agree with all that. Thank you so much, everyone. Really appreciate it. As always, 